What's up? Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. How are you doing? I'm good. I hope you're also good. Uh, Will, how are you doing? I am sincerely hoping that these cameras are not good enough to pick up the mild yellow stain on this pristine white Wolf Den sweatsh- uh, t-shirt. I can see it from here. Okay. It's, the mic's kind of blocking it. <laughs> good. We'll leave it as that. Okay. This is what happens when your one-year-old refuses to sit in his booster seat while eating his uh, his uh, Sesame Street bar oh, that in the sound, That doesn't sound too bad. Yeah. I thought I could, it could have been worse. Could have been. A lot of different stains. Yes. Today he was playing with markers and he wasn't wearing pants while he's doing it, so he's got a marker all over his uh, legs, and one of those colors was brown. Mm. So you can bet there was a lot of confusion in my house mm-hmm. as to what that was. Zim got a little PP on me yesterday. Yeah, uh, I call I'm calling it PP because it was like a little <laughs> dribble, right? Because I had to pick him up because he was mm-hmm. barking at another dog while we were at our parents' oh, house. Oh, that's right, yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> he just dabbed. Yeah, he dabbed on my shirt. It happens. Yeah, it happens to all dads. Really. I guess he had just peed. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, I I feel that. Yeah. Except except it's you know, feels like a different beast. Yeah. Dog. Pee. It's it's literally a different beast. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> how you doing? Uh, Gumby says, "Hey, Wolf Den Yuzu just dropped for Android." Oh, <gasps> that's a big deal because Skyline just left android yeah. did, we, did we talk about that no i don't i guess we didn't have an article for that but skyline the android episode. shut up hey we're doing a podcast it's our one year anniversary is it i'm in the mood for oh my god thank fancy. you so much uh yes skyline is in the an the android switch emulator the switch right. emulator for android mm-hmm. uh they got scared well, yeah, I don't blame them. <laughs> <laughs> they got scared and decided to stop operation. And yeah, I don't I don't blame them for that. Um anyway, let's let, let we got a lot of things to talk about today. The big yes. the big deal stuff was the PlayStation showcase that happened last week, which was actually a huge shock to me. Good. See, I wanted to ask about that because I, I feel like I'm the only one that liked it. I thought it was fine. I thought it had some good reveals. A lot of people saying it was bad. Yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people saying it was bad. I really liked it. I don't know how people could say it was bad. I think because this was specifically a PlayStation showcase, which is different from a state of play. Apparently, I didn't know. I I, I, I know a state of play is like a quick little thing that'll either show you more information on a game you already knew, or just show you a handful of games that are coming out. A showcase, okay. A showcase is supposed to be like their E three presentation, yeah, where they show you everything and they bring the big guns. I thought they did. I thought they showed a lot of good stuff. They didn't show a lot of first party stuff, okay, which I think a lot of people were uh, concerned about. But I think what they showed wasn't bad. It wasn't like you know the greatest reveal in the world. Yeah, there were bad things, but yeah. there was so much. Like, if there's like three games I'm interested in in a in an hour long showcase, yeah. I consider that a win. Yeah. So I I especially a PlayStation showcase. Usually, I don't like what PlayStation yeah. has. You, usually, these states of plays or these showcases, they're usually not that interesting. So I was I I I left very happy. I was down after like the first twenty or thirty minutes. I was like invested. I saw yeah. a bunch of stuff I was interested in. But uh, we'll go it beat by beat. Also, yeah. the biggest deal was that they're they're they have a portable hardware. Yes, Excuse Sony me. is back in the game, There's baby. Back in the game, baby, with and a big ass asterisk on yeah, it. Yeah, no one's happy about no. it. No. <laughs> so we'll we'll go through the list of all of the stuff, and we'll stop off on the ones that we think are yeah. interesting. And I have uh, some notes on a couple of the things that were revealed. Okay, that we'll we'll get into. I guess I should pull up my because I, I I kind of. I knew I wasn't gonna like make a video or anything, so I kind of just live tweeted it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I decided to make a YouTube short anyway on the Project Q because I there was n- never expecting them to. And I mean, we heard rumors that they yeah. were doing something like this, but I I didn't think it was gonna drop yeah. anytime <laughs> soon, you know. Um. So yeah, I have I have a thread of 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 reasons why I'm interested in certain things. Okay, we will. Uh, we all just play the week down for no reason. 
Uh, and we'll go through the list one, one uh, in chronological order. Yeah, I believe this is in chronological order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so first up was uh, Fair Games, the Haven Studios, which is a first party studio. Um, the Jade Raymond Studio revealed their That's first. That's why it's a big deal because yes. it's Jade Raymond. We didn't know what they were yes. working on. Correct. And now we now know. we know. Fair Games yeah. was the first game showcased. Um, PlayStation acquired the studio in March of last year. The teaser trailer didn't show much of gameplay, but it focused on the game's steal from the rich vibes. Basically, it's a heist game. Yeah, it looks so like when it's, I, a, it's a multiplayer heist game. When I first saw this, I thought it was Payday Three because yeah. we know that that's coming out. Uh, and I was disappointed because I don't like. I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of tactical shooters. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't like the trend of trying to add like cool tech and, yeah. and, and like, 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 like the way rainbow six is now. Yeah. Uh, and, and what call of duty is now. Like, like I, I want it. I want like old school payday, like yeah. that type of thing. So when I first saw this, I thought it was payday three and I was disappointed by all the cool tech and like abilities and yeah. stuff. But uh it's not that it's a completely different game yeah so maybe it is good i don't know there's some things i saw in the trailer that i thought were cool like it seemed to have like a focus on like old school style of stealth where you're hiding behind walls and like trying to sneak around people i to would get like to that the vault. i thought that was cooler not that it's cooler than the payday system mm -hmm. of, of how you do but it's it's just different enough to make it its own thing like a hitman situation yeah kind of more like a hitman situation i, I might like that yeah. i need some gameplay this is not a gameplay yeah game. no it's just a seat oh there wasn't a lot of gameplay uh, today no there was yeah. not a lot of gameplay yeah that was very disappointing uh next is hell divers 2 yes which i thought there was already a hell divers 2 no uh hell divers is a 2015 top-down shooter game this game is coming to ps5 and pc in 2023 it appears to be keep the original style sense of humor um the trailer was definitely heavy on the uh starship troopers vibe mm -hmm. where it's like propaganda let's go let's go on a big bug hunt for the good of the monarchy or whatever the hell so it's got that going for it i didn't play the original hell divers i didn't either but i know people loved it it was on the it was on the ps3 vita. ps4 and vita yeah yeah and then had like cross save and yeah. stuff and, and people uh played multiplayer vita and stuff yeah uh i'm interested in 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 that aspect like yes. I, like i like the idea of of a cross progression yeah uh multiplayer game so i'm interested it's on pc yeah. well, like when i saw this i was like oh i want to experience that because i didn't get to experience it on the vita back in the day uh but there is no vita now yeah uh, i have to play or it on is P there yeah <laughs> i have to play it on ps5 but it's also coming for pc a lot of this stuff that was announced is also coming for pc so that yeah. means that i get to play it on something like it uh the steam deck yes or on my uh ally or, or yeah. something so uh, I will try to have the Vita experience with this on something like the Ally. Mm -hmm. So I might actually play this. I might give this a shot, which is a glowing review from me. Yeah. If I say I'm, I might actually play this. It's not much that I that I spend my time on. Yep. Uh, next was Immortals of Avium from Electronic Arts and Ascendant Studio. It's coming to PS5, Xbox Series X, and PC on July 20th. This looks the, generic. The new awesome. trailer shown Wednesday gave us a look into both the story and gameplay elements in the lead up to its summer release date. It's a first person shooter, but the guns are all like magic. So you just like, you got a little amulet and you do the proper hand gesture and it shoots, shoots a different beam. Yeah. So is that, is this like Bioshock? No, because like Bioshock, hand, you actually had guns. Yeah, you have a gun in one hand and an and ability in the other in there, hand. Yeah. No, it's it's basically like... Like Elder Scrolls, but Elder only magic. Yeah, like uh, it's it's Doom, but it's just all hocus pocus. It's looking a lot like Destiny, but... Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think it's... I think the idea of a first-person shooter that isn't a, mili uh, like a military shooter or like a sci-fi shooter is a good idea. Okay. I just don't know if this is the game to do it. You know? it's, it's EA. It's, I, I have zero faith a, in this. It, the trailer said it was an EA Originals, which generally means it's EA funding an indie studio. Oh. Because that's what Unraveled... Ascendant Studios. Unraveled was an EA Originals. Um, What was the other one? This does not look uh, like A Way Out game. was an EA Originals. Those are both from the same studio. No, Unraveled is a different... Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Uh, Ascended Studios is an American video game developer. 
in San Rafael, California. It was founded by Brett Robbins. Uh, they are. This is their first and only game. Yeah. Uh, who the hell is Brett Robbins? A former electronic arts industry veteran. Okay. So okay. We, that's how, probably how I got the okay. connection. It's, it's like a pseudo indie studio. Yeah. Uh, next was Ghost Runner 2, uh, published okay. by 505 and One More Level, announced uh, early on in the PlayStation Showcase. Expected to come out this year on PS5, bringing action forward, uh, first-person platforming to new generation of consoles. So I was uh, interested in the first Ghost Runner, and then I played it, and I really didn't like it. It was like yeah. uh, a little janky and broken in, in ways that I didn't like. Uh, this looks a lot cleaner and I yeah. think I'll actually like this one. Yeah. So, this one looks like a lot of fun. I was interested before I knew it was ghost runner. Yeah. And then, I, and then I started to get the vibe that like, Oh, is this ghost runner? And then it showed the title screen. So yeah. I am going to play this. I might like this. Yeah. Uh, this game actually looks really cool. Phantom blade zero from S game. looks, uh, looks to be full on full of fast paced sword based combat. No release date was given, but blood was shed. This looks really cool. This looks cool. I have this didn't make it in my top. Like this, this yeah. only got an honorable mention because um, it's looking like a like a Souls type game or or like a Ninja Gaiden or one of those. Or like, yeah, or like a Nier or one of those types of games, uh, which is fine. I, I would I would like to. I'm interested and I would like to play something like that. But the all of the combat in the trailer looks a little too good to be true. Like it looks like right. It, the guy who the guy who's playing it is perfect. He's doing mm-hmm. everything perfect. Right. And all of the combos are perfect. And like I want to know what happens when you mess up or I want to know what the buttons do. Like what <laughs> what does an attack actually look like? Yeah. Because I- it looks like it's just on rails. It could be like a sonic thing where you like hit a button and it performs all of the actions for you. <laughs> I feel like they're definitely not going to show you, especially in a first reveal, they're not going to show you all the mess ups. They want to show right. you this game at its absolute best. Yeah, I don't so. I don't fault them for that, but it just I don't know what the gameplay is. Yeah. You know, I I I don't know what like I like I, again, it just looks like you you could potentially just be hitting a button and then they, he blocks like every attack that comes in. Right. You know, I want to, I want to know that what you the user the is performing. To, yeah. Yeah. I want to know what buttons you need to hit when you're fighting somebody. Got it. Cause right. It just looked like he was blocking all of those yeah. attacks just now. Like I, I, I need, I need a demo or I need somebody like a normal person to play it or right. like a reviewer to get a hands on preview it. or something before I'm interested oh, in something like this. That's fair enough. But it does look, very nice. Yeah. It looks very pretty. I'm very interested. Uh, Sword of the Sea. It's a journey, but with skateboarding. I'm also interested in this. It's made by the developer of Abzu mm-hmm. and the Pathless. It's and Journey. Very pretty. Yeah. I do like surfing on a sword. Yeah. I don't know what this game is, what type of game this is. Uh, it, it really does just look like Journey. You know, like you're just wandering through a desert trying to get to yeah. the end. You know, maybe you meet people along the way. Maybe you don't. So yeah, I need like actual gameplay. This is not. Yeah, there was no gameplay here, but the environments look really cool. Yeah. So I'm interested, but mm-hmm. I, I need more out of the trailer. Uh, the Talos Principle 2 expected out this year. A follow up to the critically, uh, c- critically acclaimed Talos Principle, which was released in 2014. The series is known for its use of philosophy and puzzles to create something truly unique. <gasps> Uh, I don't know anything about the Talos Principle. I've heard the Talos Principle is a very good, like, first-person puzzle game. Where, like, you wander, like, a world, and you try to, like, put together puzzles to try and unlock the next part of the world. Okay. So, smart people game, Bob. <laughs> yeah, this game just looked uh, but like like an asset dump. I know it's, like, all original stuff. Yeah. But it... it I mean... I feel like... I'm, like, jaded by sprawling landscapes. I yeah, don't need that I feel like anymore. without the context of it, like, to outsiders, it might look like right. asset dumps. Um, Neva Giant Squid, the developer of Gree, uh, is working on a beautiful game starring a sword person and a white wolf with antlers, and looks to be a serious heartbreaker. Judging from the trailer, it's coming to PS5 in 2024. I'm not playing that trailer because no. a wolf dies in it. Yes, and we take that very personally. We take that very personally. It was just it's it's weird. It's just like uh like the game looks beautiful. Yes, it's just a cinematic trailer that shows no gameplay mm-hmm. again. Uh, and they just kill a wolf and that like a wolf dies and that's yeah. it. That's the whole trailer. Yeah. It's very sad. Yeah. And they, it explains nothing. So that was dumb. Oh, it explains a lot. It explains the game's gonna be fucking heartbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
The next one's Foam Stars. This game looks like shit. Oh my god. Every this was like the one game everybody agreed. This looks bad. <laughs> it is it's Splatoon. It's Square Enix's take on Splatoon, but instead of paint, it's foam. I don't know if anybody can take I don't know if anybody can do Splatoon. Like I don't know if any company can decide, you know what? We're going to do a Splatoon game. I think it was bound to happen at some point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it, it definitely people are going to copy it. Same thing with Pokemon. Yeah. I don't think any company could do their take on Pokemon and do a good job. Well, I, I think Pokemon is limited to Nintendo and I, or the Pokemon company. And I think that uh, uh, Splatoon is limited to Nintendo. I feel like when the closest you can get to copying Pokemon is Digimon yeah <laughs> <laughs> like then then you know like they're in another league i mean splatoon is much more newer and like you know has proven to be a success mm -hmm. so i'm surprised like people haven't like tried to figure out a way how they can do it themselves i can guarantee you this ain't it because this looks like they are trying real hard to knock off splatoon yeah this is like way too on the nose yeah and i just don't know like i i mean Splatoon already Splatoon's pretty Splatoon's popular. Yeah, it's very very popular in Japan. Yes, this is a Japanese uh, developer, so they they might have a chance. I just don't know that many people who are just that into Splatoon. You know, yeah. there's a lot of people who who like well, Splatoon. I feel like it's one of those situations where if I wanted to play Splatoon, I would just play Splatoon. Yeah, I wouldn't play the the cheap not i wouldn't play the i have splatoon at home yeah what is splatoon missing that square needs to jump in and be like we got this yeah <sighs> you know what it's missing guns and killing yeah and and there's other games that yeah. do that yeah there's literally every other game yeah so i i there's no reason for this yeah. game serves no purpose yeah no this this is gonna i don't even it doesn't even look like fun no. It doesn't even look good. I, I really hate to break it to you. I know you haven't played Splatoon. I, Splatoon is not fun. <laughs> I played a little bit of it. I don't like Splatoon. I could have gotten into it if I could adjust myself to the weird controls. But yeah. like... I don't have a problem with the controls. I, I It's just... I don't think it's fun to fight over the territory. Okay. You know? uh, like, like, you can get killed in Splatoon and right. have to respawn and whatever. But you're you're walking around painting the ground, and then the guy yeah. comes over, and you're like, "Oh shit!" And then you get killed, and then you start all the way at the beginning, and got to do it all again. Yeah, it's very annoying. I don't think it's very good. Okay. I liked the uh, salmon run in Splatoon, right? But uh, yeah, I don't I don't know why it needs a copycat. <laughs> that just doesn't make any sense. Uh, yeah. The uh, next is Plucky Squire. The Plucky Squire, published by Devolver Digital, is a super cute storybook game. That's it. That's the that's all she wrote. So I have to mention this every time. This is uh made by w one of the people making it is the uh creative director on Pokemon Sword and Shield. Okay. So he designed a lot of the Pokemon in yeah. Sword and Shield. So that's why this game looks really cute. He's yeah. got a really unique art style. Mm -hmm. This is his like this if you follow him on Twitter or you've seen any of his work, this is his art style. It didn't really translate into the Pokemon games because right. uh, he had to kind of, I guess, like conform with the the, the Pokemon like like the Pokemon aesthetic aesthetic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but this is his aesthetic and it looks really cool and I am really interested in this. Right. It's uh, it's got all different types of gameplay in it. Yeah. But but it's it it's hard to it's hard to explain. You have to look at it. Yeah. It looks really really cute and cool. Mm hmm. I will be playing that. It's coming out for everything. Yeah. So. Uh, right next switch too. It was in a Switch indie world, which is why it might look familiar. Oh, uh, okay. It was also, I think, in an Xbox showcase. So it was in an indie world, Xbox showcase, and then yes. now PlayStation. Uh, next is Teardown, uh, which the name suggests is all about breaking stuff. The Voxel Chaos is already out on PC and it's coming to PS5 and Series X this year. I thought this was Minecraft. I didn't know what this was, and. I still don't know what the game I is. I think it's just a break stuff simulator. Okay. So like, they just have like nice building, like like nice looking buildings and you go in and you just break everything. Yes. Interesting. Uh, you know what? That has, honestly, that has potential. Yeah. People are weird. People might be interested in that. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, next was a huge deal. So Meta- I, re- I already kind of liked this showcase. Yeah. I was already down. I liked a couple of games from it. And then, mm-hmm. and then this happened. Uh, yeah. Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake Eater. A remake of Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. This was rumored. Yes. Uh, now we got the official reveal. Yeah. Uh, they're calling it Delta because apparently Delta means change. Oh, that's what that means. Also, I will say that, like, even though Kojima is not involved in this game, that is a very Kojima ass thing to do. Yeah. Call it Metal Gear Delta, Metal Gear Solid Delta. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's no gameplay, but it does look like a good trailer. It does have the vibe of a Metal Gear game. Yeah. Um, so I, in the very beginning, you just see like, bugs yeah and stuff and i and i walked away from the from the from the event i i i I walked away (laughs) yeah and i came back to snake's face oh nice to seeing snake uh and i was like what the fuck (laughs) um i understand why they kind of want to start with the metal gear 3 remake now because it's the first chronologically it's the first chronologically it's one of the more popular games in the series like one of the more critically acclaimed games in the series um it definitely has probably like the least amount of baggage to it aside from metal gear solid one um true yeah so i think like a remake of it does kind of make sense i think they should do peace walker because that game needs a remake so we're talking about like a re like the remake of metal gear solid 3 and we're excited for it yeah uh, you, but you think of this year. You had the Dead Space remake that came out and everybody loved it. Okay. Then the Resident Evil 4 remake. Then the Metroid Prime remaster. Uh-huh. And um, the System Shock remake just came out and got a lot of acclaim. Uh, we're getting the Silent Hill 2 remake very soon. We're getting a lot of remakes of popular games instead of new entries in these franchises. Yeah. This is a weird trend that's going on because we already have these games and most of them are, are playable today, like easily accessible today. Why why are companies, instead of just doing Metal Gear Solid 6 or Resident Evil 9, why are we getting remakes of all this stuff? I feel like this is the sign of a holding pattern because either developers don't know what to do next or... They don't have anything to show right now, but they need to get something out the door. Let's do a remake. Well, I can speak directly for Metal Gear. Uh, This is because they have they have the franchise. Yeah, and they have. There's no way they could do a sequel to Metal. Like, like they can't make a Metal Gear Six. It would be impossible for them to do that without Kojima. Well, then, well, I would say, why not try something new with Metal Gear? But they did. It was called Metal Gear Survive, and it was ass. <laughs> yeah, and that also was baffling because yeah. that was very soon after Metal yeah. Gear Solid Five. But I feel like, it, by the same token, this is clearly a different Konami than the one that made Metal Gear Survive. Right. You know, then the it's a different Konami than the one that you know put out all those pachinko machines. This is this is a currently a Konami that remembers that oh it's a video game company and we take video games seriously. I have to point this out. Solid Gator says political correctness won't allow them to make new games with the same point of view. As as what the same <laughs> point of view as what Metal Gear? Yeah. What's Metal Gear doing that's not politically correct? Well, I guess quiet and like things like it does okay. have weird. Sexual I was politics. very sad and ashamed by by uh, yeah quiet or whatever the Kojima quote was. But I don't think they they couldn't do quiet then. Yeah, <laughs> he got shit for quiet then. Yeah, and and to be fair, that was dumb. Yeah, quiet was a well, dumb character. Yes, quiet was a very. <laughs> there dumb was a character. very stupid reason for her to be naked the whole. Game. Yeah, no, agreed. Um. On the note of the Metal Gear Solid 3 remake, uh, Konami also announced the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection, which is um, it's going to be a collection of Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, Sons of Liberty, and Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. Yeah. Now, not mentioned in the uh, showcase, but confirmed later, it's also going to include uh, Metal Gear 1 and 2 from the MSX. 
Oh, so this is cool. a five game collection. Aren't those games in one of the other games? So here's the thing. Okay. So Metal Gear One and Two from the MSX are included in Metal Gear Solid Three Subsistence, which is like oh. the Game of the Year edition of Metal Gear Solid Three. I guess you can right, call it. Right. Right. So previous Metal Gear collections have included Metal Gear Solid Two Substance and Metal Gear Solid Three Subsistence, which are the like special edition versions of those games. This collection, as of right now, is only confirmed to include the original versions of Sons of Liberty and Snake Eater. But then also it has the MXS, right. MSX games. But Metal Gear Solid 2 Subsistence contained a whole host of extra levels and features. It had the, uh, the Solid Snake skateboarding minigame. The Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence version of Snake Eater had a completely different camera angle. It had the traditional third-person camera as opposed to the top-down view of the original release. And that's many people's preferred version of can Snake Can you Eater. change it? In subsistence, you can. You, okay. just click, you just click the right stick. Okay. I'm but willing if, to if bet. this is the original version of Snake Eater, because I believe Konami's actual word was, this is these are the games as they were originally released. Oh, uh, I'm gonna. I, it, that would seem very strange if they yeah. didn't. Well, what was in the collection that was for Xbox 360? Subsistence and su uh, substance. I think I think this is going to be subsistence and substance. Yeah, I think I. I why else would they include Emma, the MSX games? I mean, because those are you know those are probably separate ROM files. Those are probably easy to port over it probably make more sense to do that because now you're getting the whole metal gear story and this is only master collection one which right. implies that they're going to do the rest of the games oh see the 360 version also had peace walker yes yeah so i'm wondering why that's absent here so probably because they're going in order of original release right so we got the msx metal gear one uh metal gear two solid snake metal gear solid for playstation metal gear solid two and Metal Gear Solid 3 for PS2. Uh, G and XG in the chat says, I believe the Vita collection said the same thing and the MS uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 game had subsistence camera angle without the extra content. That's weird. No, it had the extra content because you can play Metal Gear 1 and 2. On Vita? Yes. I think he's saying it, did, it didn't have... Well, did, what, what was the other extra content in Metal Gear Solid 3 besides the camera? Uh, that's a good question. Because you're probably missing that. But it did have the MSX games, I think he, he's saying. Yeah. I mean, the skateboard content. No, that was two. That was Metal Gear Solid 2. That was two, two, yeah. Yeah, that was different. Uh, uh, Snake versus Monkey. I don't think that was... I don't think that was uh, subsistence. I think that was just in the game. Yeah. Snake Monkey minigame, and I think the DMC Easter egg, the Devil May Cry Easter egg, the Snake Monkey minigame. I was that in subsistence. I thought that was just in the game. I thought that was in the original game too. Yeah. Yeah. Unless I'm wrong, which I never am. I think we played the subsistence version. No, we have the original version. We have the original from yeah. the PlayStation. Yeah. Uh, disc one called Subsistence includes the full Metal Gear Solid Three along with new features and optimal. An optional third-person camera mode, uh, an imp an improved demo theater mode, a link-up mode for Metal Gear Acid 2. Uh, in addition, players can also download various camouflage uniforms to the memory card without the need to go online. Uh, then there's the Persistence Disc, which included Metal Gear Online. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then there's, yeah, also the Ape Escape minigame Snake vs. Monkeys was moved from Disc 1. Uh, with two new levels included. Uh, okay. Also, there's a secret theater mode and the playable uh, versions of Metal Gear 1 and 2 from the MSX. So it had additional levels for the monkey. Thing, yes. But not the whole new. And I'm pretty sure Metal Gear Online, wasn't that on? Wasn't that part of Metal Gear 3 anyway? Uh, Sounds like it just moved to a different disc. I think you might be right. Yeah. Metal Gear Online was on Metal Gear Solid 3. So you barely got anything in yeah. Substance. Substance was the more... But you got the, the camera angle. The camera angle. The camera was, angle was the The camera angle deal. in the original games were the big deal with Subsistence. Okay. Yeah. 
I, right. I will note, uh, Metal Gear Solid Delta is coming to Xbox and other platforms. The Master Collection is not. What the hell is the Master Collection? The collection oh, the, of the games. Yes, yeah, all of the games that we were just talking about. I, that's interesting to me. Because, the, famously, Metal Gear Solid 1 um, had a lot of Easter eggs specific to the PlayStation. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, Psycho Manus can read your memory card and find out what games you played. Um, it told you to do, do things with the DualShock controller specifically. That leads me to believe that when we get the next collection, if it includes Metal Gear Solid 4, it's not going to be multi-platform either. Because Metal Gear Solid 4 explicitly references the fact you're playing on a PlayStation 3. And they, yeah. it doesn't look like they're going to change that in any way. I think that we never got a port of Metal Gear Solid 4 just because uh, PlayStation 3 emulation is so bad yeah and hard to do and there is a lot of like weird controller stuff yeah like like, like it, it 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 takes into account how hard you're pressing the button yeah and what controllers get. like they have to adapt to that yeah. they have to adapt a lot for metal gear software it's going to take a lot of work well, also, and honestly i don't think a lot of people are going to play it yeah <laughs> I, th- I think it's, that's one it's of the weakest not a good game <laughs> yeah that's one of the weakest uh, uh metal gear games yeah um I also think there's a part in the middle of the game where Otacon's like, okay, time to switch the disc. You got disc two? No. Oh, wait! You're playing on a PlayStation <laughs> 3! You don't need to swap discs. Like, that's fine. Like, I'd like that in the game. Right. But, 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 a, a, but a remade Metal Gear Solid 4 would probably be better. Yeah, because there's no way they're going to put that in the Xbox version. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, I'm happy that they're that we're getting more metal gear yeah i am of course upset that kojima isn't yeah. involved uh i still think that there might be a deal going on with playstation and konami i, I think that playstation might be buying out metal gear yeah um oh, i mean if metal gear is going to if metal gear delta is going to xbox no i, I think that will happen after this right. for, for mm-hmm. sure but i think that there's room for this to be a great game uh, even without Kojima, because the, all of the bones are already there. Um, after this, I want to see some Kojima stuff. I want to see yeah. Kojima get involved again and make some bomb ass Metal Gear games. Right. Okay. Next, uh, Towers of Agaspa. Yeah, I don't know what okay. the hell this is. Uh, it's about restoring a beautiful, lush world and bonus. There are space whales. Wow. Cool. There's also space whales in Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Uh, Final Fantasy 16 latest story trailer debuted at the PlayStation Showcase Wednesday ahead of its June 22nd release. I'll be honest, don't look too bad. Really? It doesn't look that bad. Am I ever going to play it? Probably not. Okay. But you know what? Looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm, I mean, it's Final Fantasy. Maybe I'm I'll never, play a demo of it. I'm never going to play this thing. Okay. Uh, next up, a game I will play. Alan Wake 2 from Remedy Entertainment coming to PS5 and Windows PC October 17th. It is the highly anticipated follow-up to Alan Wake 1, uh, which was released way back in 2010. I was actually interested in this. I never yeah. played the first Alan Wake. We have a video on Alan Wake over yes. on YouTube.com slash Wolfden. Yes, Alan Wake. dig deep enough. Very good game. I really like that game. Really enjoy that game. Alan- it looks really good. It, it, it looks like... I thought this was Resident Evil a nine yeah um and this looks like resident evil 4 yeah uh the remix so i i i'm i'm down for this i might actually play this i think it's cool i think it's uh interesting you're not just playing as alan you're playing as um the fbi agent who's going to investigate uh, the town that he's in and try to find him um i think she's going to be stuck in the real world and alan's still stuck in the dream world from the first game Uh i believe the first alan wake was supposed to be open world but due to budget constraints and time, they had to like make it more linear. But the maps are still very open. I think this is actually going to be a fully open world. So you can actually oh. explore the whole thing. Um, what's interesting, I have a note on here about Alan Wake 2. Uh, Remedy shared an FAQ shortly after the reveal of the PlayStation Showcase going over some of the most pressing questions. Um, pretty early on in the FAQ, Remedy wrote that the game will be available digitally on PC ps5 and xbox series x and s oh yeah later explaining why it made this decision um in response to the question why is alan wake 2 a digital only release remedy wrote there are many reasons for this so yeah alan wake 2 is a digital only game yeah it is a triple a big budget digital only game uh remedy wrote 
For one, a large number of players have shifted to digital only. You can buy a PlayStation 5 without a disk drive, and the Series X is a digital only console. It is not uncommon to release modern games as digital only. Secondly, not releasing a disc helps keep the price of the game at $59.99 US and $59.99 uh, Euros and the PC version at $49.99 US and Euros. Uh, finally, we did not want to ship a disc product and have it require a download for the game. We do not think this is a great experience either. So I think that's an interesting debate. Would you be okay with them selling the digital version for $60 and a physical for 70 with no additional content. I think that's the, the thing is the reason why games, when they release, they're released at full price physically and digitally is to appease the physical brick and mortar retailers. Mm -hmm. They do that so that they, they don't feel like there's any disparity between where you get the games. You're keeping the price, uh, Keeping the price the same everywhere treats all the mm -hmm. retailers fairly. So then, so then, Target and Best Buy are going to get upset if Alan Wake Two is is more released for expensive. Ten. Yeah. Okay. That makes so, sense. And it, you know, it does cost money to print discs. You know, there is a fee for that. So by releasing the game digital only, they are. I mean, it's ten dollars, but they're passing those savings on to the customer. Yeah. And I think. I mean, look, this is this is going to be a tough one for a lot of people. You know, we have advocated before about like buying games physically cuz at least then you have the game. Cuz at this point, Remedy could pull the game. Cuz Alan Wake 1 was pulled digitally for a long time due to copyright issues with the songs. So, it does run that risk, but at the same time, you know, people we live in a world where people download their games. They prefer to download their games. I prefer to download my games. You know, and if that means we're going to save an extra $10, then that's great. I'm for that. And, you know, their last point is a great point. How many times do we buy games nowadays? We put the disc in, it installs, and then we got to download a 100 gig update. Yeah, for it, it, it kind of just seems pointless. To yeah. have a disc. I, I, people like having a physical media to collect yes, stuff. So no, I understand I, yeah. people being upset. I was going to get this digitally anyway if I was going to get it. Yeah. So, so. Uh, I did see that. Um, I think it was THQ. Uh, yeah. THQ Nordic who put out the physical version of the Alan Wake remaster tweeted and said, we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> they just literally just said, we'll do it. Call us. There might be like a limited run one day. Yeah, one day. But I think, you know, after after the initial like, after the initial run of this game, like maybe like yeah. a year later. Apparently, it's being published by Epic. Yes. So that's concerning because I want it on Steam. I don't want it on oh, the Epic yeah. Game Store because yeah. I want it on my freaking Steam Deck. I want to have to open up another launcher. Yeah. That's gonna be really annoying for me if I have to use freaking Steam. Yeah. I, that might actually get me to download it on PlayStation. Yeah. If that's the case. Uh, next is Mas Assassin's Creed Mirage out October 12th. Ubisoft announced during the PlayStation Showcase the game stars Basim and takes place before the events of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, a game that plays a significant a game that he plays a significant role in. So I don't know anything about the story anymore about Assassin's Creed. Me neither. However, watching this trailer, it gave me Assassin's Creed one vibes. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say. And I looked is into this... it. Yeah, they're they're going back to that style what does that mean so assassin's creed origins and odyssey and valhalla they were more like rpgs they were more like big open worlds with like you have to like build your character and like the collectathon was like out of control and stuff it was about like the numbers of your stats this is scaling all of that back it's a back to basics assassin's creed where it's more like i guess metroidvania -y in a way okay we're like yeah the, the city streets are open but like you have clear objectives it's like do this mission over. Okay, now do this. Yeah. Mission over. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. So I think I think honestly this is a great idea, scaling back Assassin's Creed. Because Ubisoft open world games have gotten too big for their own good. Yeah. So I think by going back to basics, it sort of refreshes Assassin's Assassin's Creed in a different, interesting way. Yeah, I like that a lot. Because yeah. uh they I've always been 
pissed off at their yearly release cycle for Assassin's yeah. Creed games. And if if they got to scale it back, then please, by all means. Yeah. Um, This just looks like every Assassin's Creed game. I mean, this looks like more like a traditional Assassin's Creed game than it does look like the last ones like Origins and, yeah. and, and Valhalla and those types of games, Um, which is cool. But looks like I've played this game a million times. Already, I know. And- That's the thing. Like, it's one of those things where, like, I haven't played an Assassin's Creed game in so long. Maybe I would give this a shot just to see like how it is. I just don't want it to be like a Call of Duty situation where I haven't played Call of Duty in a very long time. Let me play the new Modern Warfare, see how it is, and it's the same fucking game I played yeah. back yeah. in 2012 or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so I, I still, I, they have to do a lot to make me want to play that game. Yeah. Uh, next is Revenant Hill, uh, worker. Uh, worker-owned cooperative Glory Society uh, announced Revenant Hill. The trailer was just a tease, but the developer shared more information about the game, which has a similar aesthetic to Night in the Woods, which was created by the studio's co-founder. Um, Re- Revenant Hill stars a cat named Twigs and a community that surrounds him. The cat looks like the Night in the Woods cat, but but yes. that's that's an anthropomorphic cat, and this is just a regular cat. Yes. So. Yeah, that's it. That's all. If I got. you like the Night of the Woods, you might like this, but yes. uh, I don't see any gameplay. Yeah. So I don't know what type of game it is. <laughs> uh, next, Capcom showed off Dragon's Dogma Two. That's uh, it. All right, and people then are re- excited for this because people like Dragon's Dogma One. Okay. I'm not one of those people. Fucking but weirdos. Good, good for you, people. Fucking nerds. Uh, next is the Resident Evil Four remake is getting a VR mode. I no. was almost excited about this until I realized that the original Resident Evil 4 got a VR mode on the Oculus. Yes. But that's Oculus exclusive. This is coming to PSVR. Um, and it's going to be a free update. Which is okay. cool. Yeah. Oh, that is really cool. Yeah. Okay. So, I won't be able to play this on my Oculus. No. Ever. Probably not. That sucks. I mean, because I have P, I have Resident Evil Four on on PC. Right. So give me the VR mode on PC. Well, no, no one, no one's getting a PlayStation VR. I got news for you. I don't know if this is coming to all versions of Resident Evil Four. Obviously, aside from it, the Xbox, it just version. says in development for a PlayStation VR too. Yeah. That's all it says. It doesn't even have a release date or anything. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next is Marathon. So I missed the part in the beginning of the trailer when it says Bungie. Yeah. And I didn't know what the fuck this game was, and it looked awesome to me. Yeah. Uh, one of the more exciting prospects from the showcase was Marathon, uh, Destiny 2 creator Bungie's new colorful shooter. And if the name sounds familiar, that's because Bungie published Marathon originally back in 1994 on the Mac. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this, this looks cool. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a multiplayer only game though yeah which is a departure from yeah because marathon. marathon one two and three all had single players campaigns yeah uh marathon one two and three also free to play right now on mac pc linux and ios wow yeah how how do you get it you just get it you uh forgot the website you go to on pc but on ios just go to the app store type in marathon oh my god you just get it that's awesome yeah uh, I read somewhere that Bungie has not released a single player game since Halo Reach. Wow. Yeah. So And that it, game, wait. No, I didn't play that game. I played I played Reach. Oh I played yeah. Reach. I played the multiplayer. Okay. So it I played this count. I played the single player Reach. It was fine. But I played the single player of ODST. Okay. And that was bad. Yeah. Cause you're you're playing a Halo game without being a Spartan. Yeah. It sucked. <laughs> Um, it's just, I, I don't, I feel like this is a missed opportunity because Marathon like is a, for a single player game. Like it has a single player campaign. I feel like this is just part of Sony's weird push to do more multiplayer live service games, which is clearly like the, clearly the industry is trying to get away from that. I don't know. I, I think Bungie this is what Bungie's interested in. I think Bungie is now interested in doing multiplayer games because I mean, the last one they did was reach, but that was also primarily a multiplayer game. I don't know. Cause halo has traditionally been very good about being both. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, yeah. and then they stopped being good at yeah. being both <laughs> well, somewhere when, around the reach era. When Bungie's left. <laughs> Coincidence. I think yeah. not. 
Um, I really like the aesthetic of this game. Yes. It reminds me a lot of uh, the original Destiny concept art. Yes. I think the same guy is working on this. Well, yeah. Um, I know that people are upset that it's uh, a departure from the original marathon game. Yeah. There are marathon fans out there. There yeah, are people oh, yeah. who were it, who liked the original marathon. Yeah, man. Think about Where it. Where have they been? Think about it. This was a Mac franchise. Yeah. How many Mac uh, franchise uh, video game franchises are there that you can hold on to and say this was good? Actually, I so. am a fan of Destiny. I mm. liked the first one. The second one was okay. I tried to get back into it and I had some problems. Uh, I'm I I've been waiting for Bungie to make another Destiny, so it's easier for me to jump back into right. it, so I could start from the the ground level. This might be it. This might be it. Yeah, it's an extraction shooter, whatever that means. Yeah, I'm not. I'm still not sure what that means. The only extraction shooter I had any experience with was, I think, the division, which I just didn't like. Yeah, that there's a mode in that in there where you get loot and you have to leave with it, and okay. then other teams can try to steal it from you and like shoot you and stuff. And that sounds like what this is. Yeah. Um, and that could be really cool. It could also be really bad and stupid and dumb. But I'm willing to give it a shot. So. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I know about Marathon is that it was a Mac game and yeah. also that it uh, pioneered uh, WASD control. Controls. And Mouse Look. Uh, no, Mouse Look. That's what yeah. it was. Uh, it, it pioneered Mouse Look. Uh, no other game at the time even had that, but it wasn't a right. default setting. You had to set it and it probably didn't work right. So it was one of the first first person shooters yeah. that, that we know of today. Uh Otherwise, there is no reason for them to call this marathon. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with the original marathon. Uh, next was Concord. Something called Concord is coming to PS5 in 2024, but the trailer didn't give us much to work with. Looks colorful. It does look colorful. Yeah. Wasn't this developed by somebody that we should care about? Was it? Oh, Firewalk. That's another studio they recently yes. acquired. Yeah, I think we talked about it on this show. Mm -hmm. Uh some big deal. I think was this X uh, Bungie people, X Halo people. I don't know. It's hard to keep up. All all new studios are X somebody. True. At this point, Firewalk Studios. Uh. Uh, Sony. Yeah. Uh, by veterans of game companies such as Bungie and Activision. Okay. Former Activision executive Tony. Sue and former Bungie director Ryan Ellis. Okay. Who worked on Destiny. Okay. So yeah, that, that's 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 what it is. Got it. Uh, Maybe another Destiny type game. Yeah. It's uh an extraction shooter is a spin-off of the battle royale genre taking a di different approach to combat. In a battle royale game, you're spawned in with dozens of other players as as the circle closes in. Um, and extraction shooters go strongly against some of the cornerstones of the battle royale system. In stark contrast, extraction shooters feature maybe a dozen players per game on a large map, setting them off to collect loot from their opponents or key locations. The flow of the game is much slower, with tactics and strategy favored over pure mechanics. The biggest difference of all lies in the ability to escape the game with your loot instead of being the last man standing. That sounds more like Tarkov. Yeah, Escape from Tarkov, Hunt, Showdown, and the uh, Marauders. I've always been interested in Tarkov, but yeah. I've never played it. Uh, part of what is scary <clears throat> about Tarkov is that uh, it looks uh, uh, mechanically frustrating, like, uh -huh. like kind of like old Rainbow Six, how you like move kind of wonky because it's it's like a simulator. Yeah, but in an extraction shooter, you know, you're like getting loot and stuff, and if you get killed, that you could play for like an hour and yeah. then get killed at, and then you just lose everything. Right. And having frustrating controls and stuff is going to make yeah. that very annoying. Um, uh, so I, I, that I could be interested in something. Like yeah. That. Uh, next we got a new trailer for Gran Turismo, the movie. Wow. Okay. I must have, we talked about that. I must already. have blacked it, out Nothing's here. changed. Uh, it's still yeah. coming out. Um, Next is Project Q, which is what some of you are here to listen. To. Yes. <laughs> uh, Sony will release its own remote play based handheld device uh, currently dubbed Project Q. 
basically, it's a dual sense controller with an eight inch screen in the middle. The device is expected out later this year. We've talked about the rumors of something like this. I I get why they'd want to make something like this. Yeah. I have no rational reason why it would look like this. This this, is, this, this is, looks terrible. This is the ugliest thing since the PlayStation Five. This <laughs> this looks like a Photoshop, a bad Photoshop job for a YouTube thumbnail. Yeah, like a clickbait YouTube thumbnail. Yeah, it looks very very bad. Yeah, like it's it's shocking. So I think the reason why it looks like that is because the it has all the functionality of the DualSense controller. Yeah, and that's the DualSense controller has a lot of technology in it, and it would be difficult to adapt that to an, uh, another controller. Yeah. However, <laughs> there is still no reason for the look that I'm looking at right I now. I think a big problem is when... And this is... A, if you think about it, this has happened across... All of the PlayStations, going back to the original. When Sony decides on a visual aesthetic for their home console, mm-hmm. they stick with that fucking aesthetic yeah. for the entire life cycle. All the first party peripherals and accessories have to match that aesthetic. Yeah. You know, if they change the system like they do a slim version, it still has to conform to that style. I, I think the PlayStation 5 is the most uh uh egregious of all yes. of the playstation styles but there's been some ugly playstations like the three was pretty ugly too yeah but and they changed it and made it a little better right uh this is the 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 style they decided to go with for all of the accessories of the playstation 5 because of the playstation 5's look yeah it 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 ruins a lot of it things. does it's it's so hideous it's bad and there's like Again, they want to. They're very stubborn, and they want to keep all of the, the the technical advancements of the PlayStation Five controller. Yeah. They want you to to have all of the capability and whatever. On one hand, just lose some of the capability. <laughs> like it's not a big deal if you don't have the HD rumble and shit. Yeah, like like barely any games use it, and it's not important to the game. Right. And on the other hand. If you do want to keep all of the technology of a DualSense controller in this handheld, no reason for the gap there. There's yeah. No reason yeah. for there to be a gap in the They could have like made that. it look so much better. Than yeah. That. This is this is an uh, abomination. Yeah. Um we do have specs. It'll have an L C D screen running games at 1080p at 60 frames per second or kind of cool. Wi Fi. Uh it will feature both adaptive triggers and have the feedback of the dual sense. The Q handheld is set to launch later this year. Uh, Sony didn't say exactly when or how much the new device will cost. According to the fine print at the bottom of the presentation, games you play on the Q must be installed on the PS5 console itself. It's apparently designed as a companion for your PS5, not something that would play games natively like a Steam Deck or a phone or even stream them from the cloud. Okay, so this is just a remote play device. Yes. So on top of purchasing this, you have to own a PlayStation 5. You need to already have a PlayStation 5, yes. which is already a, a a hurdle for people. Yeah. Uh that is uh very stupid. Yes. But I this isn't a defense for for Sony, but I understand why I understand kind of their thinking here. Yeah. First of all, it's lazy. Yeah. Cuz I mean, they don't have to do anything. They don't have to develop a new thing. It's literally yeah. just a screen with Wi-Fi uh, and some controllers slapped on the sides. Yeah. Um, I've been messing around with remote play like a lot. Yeah. Uh, I I was playing it on my MacBook and it ran great. I w- want to try to play it on other platforms because like game pass works great on yeah. like an android phone on the logitech g cloud on the steam deck it, uh-huh. game pass works awesome on all different types of devices uh remote play on playstation requires a playstation 4 or playstation 5 controller so yeah. all of these awesome handhelds that i have that have all this power that I can play any game mm-hmm. can't do remote play because they have built-in controllers if i want to do remote play 
on like the Logitech G Cloud, I need to also have a DualSense controller. I can't use the onboard controller right. unless I use a third-party app like Chiaki. Chiaki. Yeah. Now I I decided to mess around with that app because I have a hacked Vita. Right. And I thought it'd be funny mm-hmm. if I can get the Vita to remote play a PlayStation Five. Because then it's like, why the fuck would I ever get this yeah. Project Q that can't play games at all when I can get a Vita yeah. and remote play my PlayStation 5 the same way? Right. Couldn't get it to work at all. Oh. It was really hard and there was yeah. like a million steps. You need you need your PlayStation ID code, not your not the name. The code. You need the, the base 64 8-bit code. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Where do you even get that? Uh, uh, a Python script, Will. <laughs> it sucked. And then I got it, and I know it was it, and yeah. I and I put it in, and it didn't work still. So. Jesus and Christ. And then, so I tried it on my Android phone mm-hmm. that's over there, and uh, that didn't work either. Okay. Like, it shows up like it's on my network, but it wouldn't connect for some reason. That is why I think this has a chance to be commercially successful, because PlayStation has done the apple walled garden thing yes where yes. normal people are gonna see this and be like oh i want to play my playstation 5 on the toilet yeah i'll spend 200 dollars." yeah because this is the only way you're gonna be able to do that this is the it's the easiest way it's you're the gonna easiest way yes. because i have tried to explain because I, I was talking about this on the show before my boss has a playstation 5 i've tried to explain to him remote play and while I'm explaining it to him, I had to tell him, you have to leave the PS5 on. You have to download a specific app to your computer or your phone. You have to connect your DualSense controller to the computer or phone. Yeah. There's all these extra steps that you have to do in order to do remote play. With this thing, all you have to do is pick up the system. Yeah. That's it. So I think for somebody who really wants to play remote play... Really, this is your only option. Yeah. Unless you feel like fucking around with a DualSense controller. I will jump in because I know the chat's already blowing up. Yeah. Uh, you can get a backbone controller. Yes. That's the only other option, really, unless you want to fuck around with having a DualSense controller yeah. attached to your to your thing. And that's just not... I don't think having a DualSense controller with, like, a phone stand is a replacement for, for a handheld. No. Um. So your only other real option is getting a backbone controller for your phone, which is a hundred bucks. Yeah. Which is honestly not bad. And again, you don't need a lot of power here. No. Because it's just it's, it's just streaming. It's just streaming. So um, I'm gonna get this. Yeah. Uh you're gonna get the backbone? Or the project Q? The back I mean, I'm gonna get both. Right. The, just, you're gonna, the, yeah. n- not because I want the project Q. Right. Because but, I want to make a video on the yes. project Q. Um I should note, uh, well, The Verge notes, uh, Sony is one of the foremost companies with a cloud gaming service, uh, one it currently seems to be overhauling based on the many job postings that have been dug up. So it's possible that the Q adds cloud gaming at a later date. It would seem weird to omit services that Sony uh, that makes Sony more money. But Sony's brief tease didn't address whether you'd be able to use the Q to stream games outside of your house. Sony's remote play does currently support connections over over cellular, though you might need to tether it to a phone or hotspot since Sony only has mentioned Wi-Fi. Yeah, I wanted to... That was another thing that I noticed when the trailer dropped was it said for remote play. Yeah. And that excludes uh, whatever PlayStation Now is called. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, PlayStation Plus Premium. Premium. Yeah. Yeah. So... It's not like Game Pass. Yeah. You need a PlayStation 5. You can't even just have a subscription. And the thing with remote play that I think we've mentioned, but I think bears repeating, because this is very important. As it stands with remote play right now, your PlayStation, either 4 or 5, has to be on. Yeah. It has to be on. So you can't just pick this thing up and start playing. If it's in your bedroom and your PlayStation 5 is in the basement, then you got to get your ass up, go downstairs, Turn on your PlayStation 5, go back upstairs, make sure everything's connected, and then you're off at the races. And, and I'll note that I, I don't think I've ever been able to just connect and play. I'm yeah. 
always had to go over to my PlayStation 5 and fuck around with it in some way yeah. in order to get it Even to just trying to connect the PS4 to my phone, mm -hmm. uh, like, took a couple of steps. Because I had to make sure, like, you know, everything's set up right. Yeah. You know, it's it's just... just the it's, way it's supposed to work is you got to fuck around with it once. Yeah. And then you should be able to go, like, on vacation and, and remotely connect to your PlayStation yeah. 5 and stuff. But it's... That's a, that's a perfect world, and we don't live in a perfect right. world. Right. So you're gonna a lot of times have to fuck with it, and that is not the experience that the general public. Wants. No, and I think you know whenever we bring up emulators or whatnot or like retro consoles, and there's that one asshole in the chat like just get a Raspberry Pi and do this, mm -hmm. just hack a Vita. Yeah, <laughs> nobody wants to do that. That's yeah. not. You know, that's not intuitive. That's not user-friendly. It's not easy. It's easy for you, sure. Yeah. But it's not easy for, you know, my wife's girlfriends who just want to play Super Mario Brothers on the TV and not have to worry about, you know, what the fuck a Raspberry Pi is. It, it, it's hard to... I mean, I've, I always know that, like, I don't want to fuck around with Raspberry Pi. Yeah. I don't want to fuck around with uh, hacking something just to play a game, you know? Exactly. But uh, it's easy to lose uh, uh, touch with 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 that. Like, I understand the perspective of people who are like, just hack them, just yeah. fuck around with the Raspberry Pi. Because I had a friend who uh, wanted an emulation device. Mm-hmm. And I was like, the Ein Odin is the easiest one you can just get and you just download all the stuff and everything works great. Yeah. He got it. And then he's like, it doesn't have anything on it. And I was yeah. like, yeah, it's an Android phone. You got to put all the stuff on it. He's like, what do I put on it? I was like, well, you put RetroArch on it. He's like, okay, where's the, yeah. where are the games? And I was like, oh, you need the, you need the, yeah. I had to explain every little thing. And it's like, oh yeah, I've done this a thousand times. So it's easy for exactly. me. Exactly. Yeah. It is still the easiest one to get, <laughs> but it doesn't mean it's easy. Exactly. You know? So I, with with all of that said, I think that this has a small potential for success because PlayStation has made this the only way to to, yeah. to do it. Aside from this backbone control. Right. But again, you have to leave your PlayStation on. So yeah. if you're going to go on vacation, you that thing's going to be on for a week, maybe longer. I, I'll note that uh, Xbox Remote Play. Yeah. Perfect every time. Yeah. Just just it just knows. Yeah. Sometimes I don't even think my Xbox is on and it just it's like, okay, we'll turn it on for you. Don't worry yeah. about it. Which Xbox again? And yeah. you just say that one. And okay, here you go. So full that, access to thing. your Xbox the on any device, any device you want, with whatever controller you want, um play in my Xbox or my living the room. The next time that Sony shows the Project Q, they need to give us more detail about what exactly this thing does. Yeah. Can it play games on the cloud? It, you have to have the game installed on your PlayStation. Okay, is that just for authentication purposes, or does that mean the thing has to be on? Uh, battery life. What's the battery life yeah. on it? What's the range on it? Uh, is there any sort of internal storage on here? Uh, how does it handle save games? Uh, how does it handle going back and forth between devices? Price. Yeah. What's the price? If this is that, that's the other thing is that this is only Wi-Fi, so yeah. the price has to be really low. Well, let's take it. How much is a dual sense? Seventy dollars? Yeah, <laughs> that's that's already so much. Yeah, there all there's so much more. This is also a screen. Yes. So and at it's the probably bare minimum, screen. yeah. At the bare minimum, seventy dollars. It has to be a touch screen because there has there's there's no, no trackpad, touch trackpad <laughs> and they need everything that a dual sense controller has. So at the bare minimum, we're at seventy dollars plus a touch screen, which is at least yeah. another hundred dollars. Just for comparison, uh, I just real quick, I just real quick looked up an Amazon Fire tablet, the eight inch version, is a hundred dollars. Okay, so we are at. Bare minimum, $170 for this thing. Yeah. I think we can round up to 200 And <sighs> 200 is the bare minimum I think they could get away with selling this for. <laughs> I don't know, man. They're going to sell it for over $300. I think if they, I think if we're lucky to get $300 out of this. And then you look at like Phil Spencer, he's like, we were going to release a streaming box for Xbox. But it was going to cost more than $100, so we decided against it. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's insane to me, like, how these two companies are operating. 
you know, you had I I was gonna say this to the end, but I'll 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 say it now. I think part of the reason why people might have thought this uh, showcase was a little lackluster was because maybe Sony's a little comfortable right now with their position. Yeah, they're they're way ahead of everybody. Not Nintendo, but they're way ahead in the console race. You know. People are buying PlayStation 5s without question. You know, they have good games on it already. They're sort of like just coasting right now. It's what happened after the PlayStation 2. Yeah. They're just, well, I mean, PlayStation, but in the PlayStation 2's life cycle, they came out with banger after banger after banger, and they had the third party support to back it up. The next console, they were like, fuck everybody. Yeah. You we you'll buy any garbage we it's we true. put out. For no matter what price we put it out at. Too. Here's this brick. It's it, this is a, a literal cinder block. Eight hundred dollars. <laughs> Open your wallets. Uh, it's yeah. And so, then they were like, "Here's a PlayStation Vita. It will play any PlayStation Three game." Yeah. As long as, long as, as it's t- only yeah. MLB the show. <laughs> Yeah, so like they're sort of in this that like, you know, you're, we're PlayStation. You're gonna buy our shit anyway. Here are some games coming out. We don't care if you care. Um, <laughs> here's the PSVR to It's cost as much as the system. Um, here's the Project Q. It's gonna cost as much as yeah. the system. So Fred Nard, Sony for rich kids. Fred Nard says works for Apple. That's a good point. It's a good point. The difference is Apple people are satisfied yes playstation people end up with not a great product yeah and i don't like i don't know if you've seen like the scuttlebutt on the internet and we've touched on it people are not satisfied with this yeah i think people are getting antsy and restless right now because they're not really showing off like what their first party studios are doing you know we didn't we didn't see i won't we'll talk about this later but we didn't see uh the last of us multiplayer game that's been talked about for ages. We don't know what Naughty Dog's currently working on right now. We don't know what's coming next from Sucker Punch. Uh, we know Insomniac's working on Spider-Man, but we haven't heard Boo from their Wolverine game. Yeah. You know? Uh, we don't know what Sony Bend is working on. We don't know We don't know what a lot of their studios are working on right now. Yeah, we know we're getting a Project Q, but the big question mark is the price because it sounds like it's not worth anything. Yeah. Because it's, it's only Wi-Fi. Nobody, yeah. nobody wants this. Yeah. My biggest frustration with PlayStation is that there's all of this great technology out there, and the PlayStation 5 has a lot of great technology, and it's all got a lot of asterisks around it. There's yeah. a lot of like, wait, I can't do this? Why can't I do this? Why can't I just yeah. use a regular controller? And like, yeah, uh, the Logitech G Cloud is Wi Fi only, but that lets you use Game Pass, NVIDIA's uh, cloud device, uh, Steam Link. It has other things you can do and with it. And you can play games on it. Yeah. It's not very powerful. No. But that's another thing I was hoping out of, and we've talked about this last time when this was leaked, when this was rumored. Um, It's just a streaming device, but it's got to have some juice in it. Yeah. And there's no reason you can't play very low-powered indie games on it. Yeah. They're just not giving you the capability because they don't want to open up that uh, wormhole. They they don't want to have to, like develop for that you know yeah but like put freaking dead cell dead cells runs on an android phone yeah why can't it run on this you know yeah it's just it's a there's a lot of questions with this thing yeah i mean obviously we don't we won't know until it comes out but you know as of right now not looking good not looking like there's a real reason to own this this is a complete aside but i was fucking around with the vita and uh the did you know the vita does not support two factor authentication i don't think i knew that so if you have two factor authentic you have a vita yeah you probably have two factor authentication on your playstation network account yes go home and try to try to turn on your vita and log in oh boy there is a way around it okay the vita does not tell you <laughs> The Vita just says, that's not your password. Great. <laughs> you have to go to your PlayStation account on the computer, uh-huh. go to security, go to uh, uh, go to account, go to security, and then all the way at the bottom, it says log in on other devices. You click on that, and it just gives you like a 16-string code or something, okay. and you copy that and paste it in as your password in the Vita. 
But the again, the Vita does not tell you that. It's been a long time since I turned on my Vita, so. So you have to. That's how you have to do it. Great. <sighs> yeah, and I only knew that because Sly Cooper fan in the chat told me that. <laughs> that's the only reason I know that. Okay. He says the PS3 doesn't support two-factor authentication either. I I don't think there's anything wrong with that because they're old devices. Right. But update the device to say, yeah. here's the steps you need. Although when I logged into my PS3 a while ago to do that random ass update they did for it, mm -hmm. there was no problem. I signed in no problem. So Maybe it forced the update. Maybe. I don't, I don't, I don't uh, know. Uh, okay. All right. Hey, uh, we got more things to talk about. Though. Yeah, we got earbuds. They're also coming out with earbuds. Ah, uh, who gives a shit? About Apparently, that? they will sync to the 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 system and your and your phone at the same time. So, like two Bluetooths. Yes, that's, that's cool. Because cool. cool. if you use Discord or something else to chat with your friends, so that's an interesting thing to bring up because Discord is owned by PlayStation or part owned by PlayStation now. Oh, that's right. And I have used Discord on PlayStation because I had to do it with VR. Mm -hmm. And it's weird. Yeah. I think I've explained this before, but you know how on uh, Spotify, if you have it on your phone, mm -hmm. you can say, hey, don't play this song on my phone. Play it on my parents' Amazon Alexa. Yeah. You know? That's how you use Discord on the PlayStation. You use it on your phone and you say, hey, don't play Discord on my phone. Play it on my PlayStation. Okay. And it, and it like beams it to your PlayStation. Got it. It's kind of it's kind of dumb. Um. Anyway... Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Man 2. Uh, we got like a 16-minute uh, trailer for it. It showed off Craven the Hunter. And most importantly, it showed off actual gameplay. And at first glance, it does look similar to the original game. But we got a lot more moves. We got to see Peter in the black suit and all the cool stuff that comes with that. We got to see Queens. <coughs> so this game is going to take place beyond the island of Manhattan. It's also going to take place in Queens and Brooklyn. And I think one other borough. So greatly expands the world. Uh, a lot of new abilities. We'll see Miles gliding mm -hmm. in the game, which is cool. Um, Peter does a really cool thing when he's Black Suit Spider-Man where he just kicks a dude against the wall. I laughed at that. <laughs> um, I like Black Suit Spider-Man. I like that we got him. Yeah. Um, I wasn't too into this trailer just because of, like, it, it, it just seemed like... Uh, how do I put it? Like, can't be triple A shit. Like, I know Spider Man's can't. Yeah, that's that. That's but Spider Man. Like, but like, and like, I'm a, I'm able to suspend my disbelief to like uh -huh. an extent. But there's like, there's a part in the trailer where he like has all of this room to web sling, and he web slings through like a train car for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> there's 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 a part where. Uh, Miles is is uh is like surfing off of that like yeah drone glider thing, and he's like, fly faster, fly faster. How about just fly up and then you're done, <laughs> and then the guy can't catch you because yeah. you're flying. There's a there was a lot of like, they didn't think these action sequences through. They're just giving you action sequences. Yeah, but I mean, like like you said, that's Spider Man. Like he would do like. That's what you expect from a Spider-Man experience. It's like to to slide through things, even though it'll probably be faster to just go. Yeah, but around. it's in a comic, and you can't, you don't get to see the the other ways around. You know. Yeah, but no, they do it in the movies too. So I don't know. I think the best action movies are the ones that uh, give you like like the the like the John Wick like raw like like like. I don't want to say realism because it's yeah. just it's fucking not realistic at all. But like it feels like you it feels like this is the only way he could do it. I don't know because like this, this was this was the point. <laughs> look at look yeah. at all look at all of the space he has. Why did he go through that? I mean, there's no power up in there or anything. There's not. There's no reason for that. That might have just been put in the trailer to show you that you can do that. Yes, because you could do that in the original game, and by having you by showing that in the trailer, you could still do that. And you mm -hmm. might get you might get style points for doing it. Wow, <laughs> cool. When it comes to like high fan, like 
Spider-Man is high fantasy. Like yeah. not like Lord of the Rings style high fantasy, but like it, it's it's pure fiction. Yeah, there's like nothing monsters about, and stuff. Nothing yeah. about it is realistic. Yeah. So going overboard with the action makes a lot of sense. To a point though. Yeah. I don't feel like him going through a train when he could have gone around breaks anything mm-hmm. in terms of like suspension of disbelief. It was just like, why did that happen? <laughs> I was just, I was just like, okay, you didn't have to do that. So, I mean, it, it was kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, when when you use it as, as a, as a vessel for showing that this is what you could do in the game, I understand that yeah. makes a little more sense. And then something just ticked. What the hell was that? No, okay, I think noises. the hanger, the hanger moved there for some reason. That was weird. Yeah. Uh, that. That I understand, but but th- but then then him just, just the you're, the crocodile is is in the water. <laughs> get out of the water! You have a way to get out of the water. Get out of the water. Yeah. Uh, also showed off in this game is you could switch between Peter and Miles. Now it didn't say if you could do that on the fly. That'd be like cool if Grand- it was like a Grand Theft Auto. Thing. Yeah, yeah, or if it's story based. I hope it's not. I hope you can just switch between the two at any point. Yeah, and and you get to experience both stories yeah yeah so that would be cool uh i do think i do like the way this game is headed i think the idea of craven going to new york to hunt down the spider Men and the other superpower people while also venom is around mm-hmm. it's a great play on this on this relationship and having miles versus peter as black suit peter is like really interesting to me yeah so i'm very excited for this game uh we know it's coming out this year i need to know when it's coming out this year because then i will probably actually buy a playstation 5 because i want to play this game there's been a lot of black suit or venom games yeah and a lot of them have gotten bad scores yes i liked web of shadows web of shadows like but it got a bad review that's in a lot of uh blah blah yeah no, try this again. Web of Shadows, it, that's a you either like it or you don't type of game. It has, it does have a lot of people who genuinely like that game, but it also has a lot of people who genuinely don't like that game. Yeah. So, uh, I know Spider Man Three, the movie, the game was garbage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, then there was an ultimate one that I didn't play, but I heard people liked it, but I don't think it reviewed that well. No that that was that one was uh, reviewed very well. Oh, and okay. people like that one. Okay, so that's the only one then. Yeah. Uh, besides, like, Maximum Carnage. Yeah, but that doesn't really count. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't count. So, this could be cool. This mm-hmm. this, this this could be cool. I'm uh, very excited for it. Yeah. And then that was it. That was it. Uh, so, overall, it was fine. Yeah, my big standouts were Helldivers, Ghost Runner 2, Plucky Squire, Metal Gear Solid 3. Yes. Marathon, and whatever, whatever Project Q is. Yeah. Uh, I dug Spider-Man 2, uh, Alan Wake 2, the Metal Gear stuff, um, Phantom Blade 0 looks really cool. Uh, I was intrigued by Assassin's Creed Mirage, probably not going to get to it immediately, but I was intrigued by it. Mm -hmm. So there was stuff here. Yeah. But I understand why people are like, this was not the big, you know, the big showcase of like what we wanted to see for PlayStation for the next year. Because yeah. there was a lot of first party stuff missing, um, there wasn't a lot of like big third party stuff either to write home about. Oh, there was a lot of stuff we already knew about. Yeah, so. I, I mean, I just liked a lot of what I saw, and and I understand. Like, I mean, there's been other PlayStation showcases where people have liked it, and I'm like, I didn't see anything I was interested yeah. in. So I think that this just catered to a different audience than they usually do. Yeah. So. Uh, I, I I get that. I mean, sometimes you watch one of these showcases and it's all like JRPGs, and people are like, "Oh yeah. my god, that was amazing!" <laughs> and I just I just don't see it. Yeah. So this uh, this was. I mean, I would I would think that leaving this, I would be like, this this had something for everybody, but I guess it didn't. Yeah. I guess it didn't have. So- I mean, if you're an RPG guy, all you got was Final Fantasy, I guess. And Dragon's Dogma. But and like, Dragon's Dogma. Yeah. But like you know, that's like Final Fantasy, Dragon's Dogma. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, PlayStation's a Japanese company. You didn't really get a lot of JRPG stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you want to talk about the Sony Investor presentation? Before we do that, we didn't thank any subscribers. No, at fuck all you guys. Today. <laughs> so D Jinx 
Thanks for the two months. Uh, Kai, thanks for the prime. Crimson, thanks for the prime. John McCheese, are you any relation to the mayor? Yes. Oh, thank you for the five months. Timmy Two Shoes, thanks for the 12 months. <coughs> uh, it's our one year anniversary. I'm in the mood for something fancy. Well, I hope you're in the mood for a PlayStation presentation. Yeah. Because that's what you got. They're all guyish. Uh, thanks for the six months. 360 Degrees of Tasmania. Thanks for the 16 months. Will, you are the game show master. <coughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Bob, have you checked out SF2000? What is that? It's an SNES controller with a 1280 by 720 HD 3-inch screen. SF2000? Has seven built-in emulators and output to play on a TV or monitor. I uh, have seen a couple of devices like this. Um, this looks like the Super Boy. This look, I have. Um, I think it's an Ambernick console that looks similarly to this, mm -hmm. and it's bad. <laughs> so there's. I think there's now a Pal Kitty device, and then I guess there's this thing. Right. It's definitely garbage. But I mean, for thirty five bucks. Yeah. Maybe it'll play Yoshi's Give it a Island. shot. Yeah. Uh, Thorvidwarf. Thanks for the 14 months. Wolf Bros. Hello. Hello. And G G Gian XG. Thanks for the subscription. Bob, do you have a pair on your iMac because of iCarly? Is that a thing? I guess. AWebs. Thanks for the Prime. No, I did a... I did a sponsored video with Gigabyte, and I don't think they cared if I showed yeah. the Apple thing, but I just thought I would. Might as well. Might as well. And tracks, also, I yeah. thought it was funny. Yeah. I think it's funny. Now I've just been keeping mm -hmm. it because I, I think it's funny. Um, there should be an episode on the podcast to talk about console exclusives. What about them? I guess if we run out of topics like rank console exclusives or talk about whether or not console exclusives have a place in the current generation because that's been a top that's actually been a topic for since the ps4 era like do console exclusives matter anymore i'm writing it down okay there we go all right let's all right. talk about uh the investor something so before before the showcase, Sony held uh, an investor presentation where they showed off just basically a lot of stats and gave a lot of information. Uh, I'll just skip to that. The PSVR 2 is already outselling the first uh, PSVR. Sony's new virtual reality headset is comfortable but pricey and requires people to own a PlayStation 5. But initial sales numbers show it's actually tracking ahead of the first PSVR. PSVR 2 sold 600,000 units in its first six weeks, while PSVR 1 sold closer to 550,000. Um, whether that momentum will build the platform into something more than an, exper and then an expensive accessory remains to be seen. Um, analysts previously called for a price cut to fuel sales, but it's unclear if the big if uh, big new games will arrive without a larger install base, especially as companies like Meta lay off the VR developers and cutbacks. Um. I don't think the PlayStation VR 2 outselling the first is anything to write home about. Yeah. Because the first one didn't sell very good either. Yeah. Um, and, it, you know, we did. there were two other games shown off for... There were three other games shown off for PSVR 2 that we didn't talk about. Um, one was Beat Saber. With, oh, yeah. With Queen. You can listen to the Queen while you. That's beat a big Saber. deal because they didn't have Beat Saber. Yeah, they had Anime Girl Beat Saber. Yeah, and two other games whose name I can't remember, but one was Zombie and one was Military. Uh, Arizona Sunshine. Yeah, Arizona Sunshine. That didn't look good at all. No, they spent a long time on it, and yeah. it and it looked stupid. And well, the reason why I emphasize that I don't remember the name of those two games is because when it comes to VR, you either get like weird shit like Beat Saber or you get like first person shooter stuff. Yeah. That's sort of become VR's niche. And there hasn't really been much experimentation after that. So I think we've reached a point where when people see VR, they're going to think either weird shit or first person shooters. So, and that's not, you know, you can get that elsewhere. I 
was a little interested in the second VR game that uh, the name's escaping me because it was a tactical shooter mm-hmm. and I was a little interested in it. Uh, yeah. But then I was like, I'm never going to fucking play this. I yeah. almost put it down as one of the games I was interested in. But yeah. then I was like, it's just this is just never going to happen. Yeah. Uh, next point. Sony plans to invest a ton in new franchises. Uh, so uh, Since the PSV... Since the PS5 launch, fans have been waiting for new IPs that would grow out of the last generation of uh, consoles. Uh, so far, it's been mostly sequels to series that have already existed uh, or got their start on the PS4, like God of War, Horizon, and Spider-Man. Sony revealed that new franchises are planned. Sony Studios' investment in new IP will hit 50% in 2025 compared to only 20% in 2019. However, the lag in production means that we might not end up seeing the results of that spending until late in the PS5's life cycle. Uh, that's true. It's mostly just been sequels. I think Returnal is like the only new game, new like new IP for Sony. I don't really know what to think of that. Like, on the one hand, I know that people aren't so receptive to new releases. But... I think that companies are just getting less willing to take the gamble. On, oh, 100%. On, Cuz like don't... they're running out of ways to uh they're running out of safe bets. Yeah. Like they they need to have a new IP that is different than all the other games they've been making. Yeah. Uh and that's a gamble. Yeah. But I, I don't think I don't think it's a problem with the audience. I think if you present it well enough, the audience will be there for a new IP. We've seen that. It's with... just easier. It's just easier for them to just fart out right. an older but IP. But you can't you can't do a sequel if you don't do the original first. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like they, they need to build IPs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like people were they put out Horizon. It did well. People liked Horizon. We got a sequel to Horizon, you know, Ghost of Tsushima. They, that was a new IP. That was a weird one, you know, cause it's coming from sucker punch. You never did anything like that before. Mm-hmm. And it was a big hit for them. You know, I'm, I'll be sure they're working on Ghost of Tsushima too, or something like that. So, but you don't get to do that without making the first game. One so. of the wildest experiences was going to E3 mm-hmm. and the Nintendo booth was all Splatoon. Yeah. And we were like, what the fuck is Splatoon? Yeah. They put all of their eggs in the Splatoon basket. And that was a Wii U game. Yeah. That was and ridiculous. Look at it now. Yeah. That was crazy. And yeah. it, that that that's why Nintendo does IPs the best yeah. out of anybody. They're willing to be like, here's a weird one. Yeah. And you're gonna love it or or we're gonna lose everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, live service games will be over half of that spending. Ah. Sony's first party, Sony's first party single player games have been setting the bar for story driven blockbusters for years now. From The Last of Us to Ghost of Tsushima, it's clear the company now wants to do the same for live service multiplayer games as well, and will be leveraging its recent acquisition of uh, Bungie to achieve that. Here are some charts. Uh, <laughs> the breakdown of total spending on the content this year will be 55% on live service business model versus 45% on traditional ones. The difference will be even more stark by 2025 when live service spending will reach 60% of seemingly all production costs. It's possible some of those games will still have a traditional single player emphasis and just include cosmetic shops like Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Others are sure to be multiplayer focus affairs, much more like Destiny 2. Wow. Okay, so that sucks. They're yes. going to yes. spend a lot on live service stuff. Uh, they, we're never getting new IPs. No. And any new IP we're going to get is going to be a live service piece of In junk. fact, we're never getting new IPs to the point where Bungie is reviving an IP from the 90s. Yeah. And just making it nothing like the original. Yeah. that That's the world we live in now. Yeah. Uh, this goes back to, you know, what I was saying before, where we're getting a lot of remakes of games that we already have. Yeah. So, uh, but PS5 owners spend a ton on microtransactions. Uh, prestigious exclusives may help sell the console, but it's not what makes the most money. Sony revealed that PS5 players are spending over a hundred dollars more than PS4 players. 
uh, we're at a similar point in the console's life cycle. The extra money isn't coming from more games sold. It's coming from spending on add-on content, meaning paid DLC and microtransactions. Yep. Game companies have gotten really good at just squeezing us dry. Yeah. Uh, full game sales actually dropped by 10% on the PS5, while add-on content grew by 210%. Sony collects a 30% uh, commission on all in-game purchases in Fortnite, Modern Warfare 2, and Apex Legends. It would stand to make a ton more if those purchases uh, were made inside uh, its own first-party exclusives. So that's why we're getting all these fucking live service games so that they don't have to so that they don't have to share 30% of the revenue with other companies. They could just share all of the revenue with themselves. Right. That makes that makes sense. Okay. Uh, next, Spider-Man sold great on PC, but The Last of Us Part One is off to a slow start. Yeah, because it it, it is, didn't work. Yeah, it sucked. It did. It, it was broken. Um, as the article mentions, it came out on PS3, PS4, and PS5. Yep, it's an old game. Yeah, people, everybody's people had have it already. played it. People want to play. It, they would have played it by now. Yeah. Uh, Spider-Man, however, was a much more recent game, and it was the first time a Spider-Man game had been a console exclusive. So. People want to fucking play Spider-Man. Also, it was a big deal that uh, Sony even put it on PC at all. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, next up, half of all games released... Sorry, half of all game releases won't just be on the PS5 by 2025. Um, it's clear that the company is ready to do more with porting to the PC as porting its exclusives and investing in potential mobile spinoffs. The company plans for 50% of its releases in 2025 to e to be either PC or mobile games. Oh, okay, that's, that's good. A, that's a big change. I mean, mobile's weird, but yeah, I want more PC stuff out, out, yeah. out of Sony. That'd be cool. Uh, a lot of players are paying for the more expensive PlayStation Plus subscription. Sony revealed uh, when Sony unveiled its overhauled PS Plus program, creating three separate tiers and folding PlayStation Now into the priciest option. It seemed needlessly complicated. The highest tier, premium, also didn't seem worth the extra price in, in exchange for a slim selection of classics and cloud gaming features that are still a work in progress. Uh, it turns out that a lot of people are willing uh, are willing to upgrade. Uh, Sony says 14.1 million subscribers joined the highest tier in the first 10 months, which now represents 30% of all PS Plus users. And premium actually accounts for the majority of those with 17% of total subscribers, while the middle tier extra only has 13%. So people are willing to spend the more people are willing to spend more money on the premium tier of PlayStation Plus than they are on the extra tier. Probably because that just seems like the simplest thing to do. Because you just get everything. Yeah. I, I I think we're gonna we're gonna lose all of the baseline uh, subscription services. I I think I think those are all gonna just go away one day. I, I think there's still I think there's still a place for PlayStation Plus Basic mm -hmm. because I've i we've had this conversation with Game Pass and Xbox Live Gold. Yeah, they're they're two different markets. You know, one is like do they just want multiplayer and a couple of the features that Gold uh, gives you, and Game Pass are people who want everything. I think that they're going to remove it and people are going to be very mad, but buy it anyway. Buy it, spend the like extra they're, money They're going to anyway. force you to get uh, PlayStation Yeah, and premium. they're going to make a lot of money yeah. off of people's rage. That's what I think is going to happen. Well, now you're going to see a lot of people just cancel their subscriptions and hope for... Whoops. Yeah, but the people who end up paying are going to yeah. make up for it. Uh, the first PlayStation Mobile game will arrive as early as 2023. Oh, yeah, Sony they don't said, have any. Yeah. Sony said it's currently partnering with established teams on games and bringing some of its most celebrated IP to mobile, with the first set to release in fiscal year 2023. Uh, the company acquired Savage Game Studio late August, and Bungie is also rumored to be working on a mobile version of Destiny 2. All right. We got to yeah. move on to Nintendo because okay. we there's a... It, big topic about them blocking all right dolphins. and sony is also apparently investing in cloud gaming hopefully it means it will, it'll be better than what it currently is yeah they just need to make it uh accessible they just need to do game pass yeah just do they, game they need pass. To make it easier to, to you to, yeah. to play make the service is good it's there yeah just let me use it yeah you know all right uh do we have notification no okay Big deal news that we were going to make the main topic, and then we didn't. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Nintendo has forced Steam to get the Dolphin emulator removed from the Steam store. This is a 
post from the Dolphin uh, EMU bl uh, blog. It is with much disappointment that we have to announce that Dolphin on Steam uh, release has been indefinitely postponed. We were notified by Valve that Nintendo has issued a cease and desist citing the DMCA against Dolphin's Steam page and have removed Dolphin from Steam until the matter is settled. We are currently investigating our options and will have more in-depth response in the near future. We appreciate your patience in the meantime. Yeah, uh, this sucks. It was yes. a big deal that Dolphin was on Steam. Yeah. Uh, they didn't show any Nintendo assets or anything. They were per they're purposely uh, like cagey with what Dolphin really was. Yeah. Even the screenshots of games were showing like homebrewed games, like yes. like like completely uh, uh, independently made games for yeah. Dolphin that looked uh, like vaguely like some Nintendo title, yeah. but but weren't. Um, the only Nintendo asset that I saw was the Wii pointer finger. Yeah, that was it um and that wasn't enough uh yeah steam got a cease and desist from nintendo to take dolphin down yeah nintendo responded uh nintendo is committed to protecting the hard work and creativity of video game engineers and developers this emulator illegally circumvents nintendo's protection measures and runs illegal copies of games using illegal emulators or illegal copies of games harms development and ultimately stifles innovation Nintendo respects the intellectual property rights of other companies and in turn expects others to do the same. That's crazy because Nintendo never responds to this stuff. Yeah. Uh, I I guess they know what a big deal this is, so they have to respond to it. Because Dolphin has been around since the GameCube came out. I think they're considering it a big deal because a big company like Valve tried to, I guess, defy them. I don't know if it necessarily, like, defy but just willingly allowed it to happen you know like because if this was that's, like yes that's what they did but in nintendo I, i'm saying in nintendo's eyes they're like we are fucking nintendo yeah you can't allow this on your platform right you know but i feel like like if this was like the app store mm -hmm. like apple would have like seen it and said no if this was like google play they might have seen it and said no. If this was the Microsoft uh, Xbox store, Microsoft might have seen it and said maybe. Yeah. Because <laughs> they did. But my point is like, you know, Valve is, like you said, Valve is a big store. They allowed it to be on there. And Valve is specific, and Steam is specifically a game store. So Nintendo being in the same field, seeing that Valve is technically a competitor now because they have a, a handheld device. Mm -hmm. You know, they they have to step up and say something. Yeah, but like, okay, RetroArch yes. on Xbox was on retail mode, and then I think they took it away recently. Yeah. Uh, and remember, we had a story where uh, a person who worked at Microsoft said that it was because they, they took it off of the store because they didn't want to piss off Nintendo. Right. And then Microsoft had to release a statement and said, no, it's not because of Nintendo. We just want to be very careful with emulators on our platform. Right. We want to make sure that they check a lot of boxes and, and that people can't use them to circumvent uh, uh, security issues on the platform. Right. I'm calling bullshit on that. <laughs> I think that it was Nintendo. I think Nintendo... Uh, it might have been a cease and desist. Yeah. But I think Nintendo in some way privately said, hey, Xbox, we see that you have emulators. Uh, people are playing our games on your platform and we don't want that. Yeah. And they took it down. And I think that uh, Valve wouldn't have done that. I think if Nintendo yeah. secretly was like, hey, we see that you have emulators. You can't do that. St St Valve would have been like, no. Like, we, yeah. it, it's, we have the legal right to keep it up. Like, we're going to do it. Yeah. So they had to serve a a cease and desist. And then Valve was in the position of do we want to fight for Dolphin? Yeah. Like do we want to get our lawyers involved for Dolphin? Yeah. So So they didn't. I understand why Valve took it down. I understand why Nintendo went after it. I don't agree with it. No. <laughs> because you know, Nintendo Nintendo is not doing anything with GameCube games right now. They are not doing anything with Wii right. games right now. Right. There is no way to play GameCube games 
and Wii games. There's like a handful of Wii games you can currently legally buy right now. Yeah. On uh on Switch. So when they say using illegal emulators or illegal copies of games harms development and ultimately stifles innovation. How is it stifling innovation? Yeah, these games are twenty years old. And and you cannot get them. Yeah. Yeah, you're 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 stifling your own innovation. Exactly. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous and it's dumb. Yeah. And it like it hurts it all it hurts is your consumer base. Yeah. It it's and like this is the same topic we have every time Nintendo goes after ROM sites and emulators and stuff. But I feel like this is especially egregious because it's Dolphin and it's for a system that Nintendo is not acknowledging right now. Yeah. Yeah. So like what what are you doing yeah. <laughs> basically? Remember when uh Valve released uh like a like a trailer for the Steam Deck? Yeah. And they had Yuzu on the Steam Deck? Yep. And they just showed it. Yeah. And then they deleted the trailer and re-uploaded right. it without uh Yuzu on it. But I like to think that Valve knows what they're doing and they are pro emulation. Yeah. Uh but at the same time, they're a kind of tiptoeing around it. Yeah, they, can, they can't say that they're pro emulation. Yeah. I think that they are our biggest ally right now. Yes, they're emulation's biggest ally, and 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 if anybody is willing to, there's, I've talked about this before. I think emulation is in a really scary spot right now because mm. uh, all of the laws are only going to be passed by companies and and people who have money mm -hmm. and unfortunately uh emulators are run by illegitimate companies yeah. and people who don't have money so the laws are going to be written by these corporations and the only one the only people that have any standing are companies like microsoft but they're yeah. not going to do anything because they want legitimate uh yeah uh, relationships with people like nintendo yeah valve seems like the perfect white knight the perfect yeah. company that can actually fight for emulation because they they got no horse in the race they don't want to work with nintendo they don't give a shit yeah but they know everybody's buying a steam deck and fucking putting, yeah loading it up with emulators so yeah i mean Emulators have been around for decades. Yeah. Like, we would fuck around with them in middle school. Yeah. Like, they're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. All you're going to do is make it... The best Nintendo can hope for is just make it harder to get this stuff out there. But it's not going to stop. Yeah. You know? The music industry learned this after Napster. And they eventually, after years of fighting it, just gave in and allowed music to be available easily on computers. Yeah, they just need iTunes, to take what everybody else is doing, yeah. take what everybody else is doing and make it better. Yeah. So Nintendo is <clears throat> very slowly trying with the Nintendo Switch Online and stuff. Yeah. But it's not enough. It's nowhere near yeah. what uh, music did. No. No. And it's look, it's not just Nintendo. It's also Sony and Microsoft. Yeah. Microsoft has been a little bit better about it because yeah. they have backwards compatibility with everything. And Sony is trying, but they're not doing a great job of it because they block off backwards compatibility behind uh, the higher tiers of PlayStation Plus. Microsoft seems as though they're trying to turn a blind eye to uh, at least Microsoft emulation. Yeah. They're, they're like, ah, you know, we don't see it. Mm -hmm. Sony is a they're not like striking things down like Nintendo is but they've fought in court before yeah. you know they 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 know about emulation and don't want it to exist mm -hmm. um and Nintendo is the most egregious out of all of them they're they're fighting really hard yeah um but yeah I think we we need some body with a lot of money to come in yeah. and be like hey something's wrong here like like these people own these games. They should be allowed to play it however they want. They should be allowed to mod them however they want. Mm -hmm. These emulators are already proven to be legal. Uh, what's the harm in distributing them if there's no IPs on there? I think people in the chat are saying that uh, there were game keys in Dolphin, and that's yeah. not legal. 
I don't know how that works because I, I know that there's game keys in like Nintendo Switch emulation, but I've never heard of that in in in, in, right. uh, in GameCube emulation. I know there's BIOS, but that's already been proven yeah. to be to be legal. Oh God. Uh, George McFarlane said Valve notified Nintendo of it. So it's technically Valve's fault. What? Valve notified Nintendo of the dolphin. That doesn't sound right. How, why would, how would, why? I mean, why it, would they do that? I guess it makes sense. Like, like I was saying before, like if, if this was the app store, Apple would, you know, take it down themselves. But Valve probably wanted to tell Nintendo about it so that, you know, to see what Nintendo would want to do about it. You know? I... I They ratted on themselves. Well, they no, they ratted on Dolphin. You know, Valve's not in trouble. As long as Valve took the thing down, Valve's not in trouble. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Valve could have just taken it down without saying anything. Valve could have just been right. like, hey, this is copyrighted. You can't do it. They probably wanted to make sure it was okay. Maybe Nintendo was going to be cool. <laughs> Come on, man. Be cool. <laughs> Nintendo is not cool. No. Um, I'm trying to find a source on that because I, I just do not believe that. Yeah. And that is that is so much worse. Yeah. If Valve did that. Why wouldn't they do that with like I mean, well, they can't do that with Yuzu because it's not on fucking Steam. Yeah. Uh, all right. All right. Well, anyway, we got we're like way we're out of very time behind. Here. Yeah. I want to know about this Ape Do uh, uh thing because I didn't even know this existed. Yes. Uh, f- so Ape Do, you know how they sell Bluetooth mods for original controllers? Mm-hmm. You just it's just basically a new motherboard that has Bluetooth thing in it. Uh, well, we're getting an N64 one. That will be uh, wireless compatible with the Nintendo Switch and Android devices whoa. through Bluetooth. It's it's the it's whoa! It goes on the back. It's it's a it's a like a no no no. Okay, S- scroll up. It's a motherboard. You oh, I a, thought that was a Super Nintendo controller. No, that's the motherboard. Okay. Uh, the kit optionally includes an upgrade to a Hall Effect analog joystick replacement, which should extend the life of the controller almost indefinitely, as Hall Effect joysticks uh, should never drift. Uh, we've been over that. They might be able to. Uh, wireless connectivity also means the N64 controller won't be connected uh, to power. Prior kits used a rechargeable battery on the internal replacement mainboard, which required uh, other upgraded controllers to rely on proprietary charging cables. Um, but this time around, Ape Do has integrated one into the replacement rumble pack. The pack uh, still vibrates, but also includes uh, control uh, control buttons and a standard USB-C charging port. Unlike the new Hall Effect joystick, uh, the upgraded rumble pack is essential for the N64 controller to go wireless. So that's basically the battery pack. That's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Uh, the, full upgrade, uh, the full upgrade, including the wireless mod kit, uh, the rumble pack, and the Hall Effect joystick is currently 40 bucks. If you want to skip the joystick, uh the upgrade is just 30 bucks. And if you want and if you want all of this in an up sorry, and if all you want is the upgraded joystick, that's just twenty dollars. Oh, so it's a it's Hall Effect and is it GameCube style? It looks GameCube style. I think it is GameCube style. It looks yeah. GameCube style. Okay. So Yeah, that is definitely GameCube the style. The whole kit is forty dollars. Um the kit without the Joystick update is $30, and the joystick update itself is $20. That is really cool. Yes. I, I that want is this. Cool. This is really that cool. That is very good. Um, I would recommend this to anyone who has an X64 controller and want to go the the Bluetooth option. Ape Do doesn't sell them, but I know companies do sell Bluetooth dongles for the N64. Okay. So that you can use other controllers for it, You'd like the Retro Fighter ones or other Bluetooth N64 style controllers. Uh, Castlemania games I know sells them. So I need to get me uh an N sixty four controller. Yeah. To to try this out. This looks really cool. Yeah. I'm interested. Um all right. Uh when is this out? Uh this is out I think it's up for pre order. Send me one. Yeah. Send me one, please. <laughs> Our friends at eight. They've said they they sent me something recently that was really cool oh, yeah? that I can't talk about oh, until next week. Poo. Actually, two weeks. Um, uh, f- 
currently everything's sold out on their website. <laughs> you know, maybe I have an email. I'll have to yeah. look. Okay. Uh, next, the Last of Us multiplayer game has development on it has slowed down, but a new single player game is coming. Uh, I'll just read the statement from Naughty Dog. Um, we know many of you have been looking forward to hearing more about our Last of Us multiplayer game. We're incredibly proud of the job our studio has done so far. Um, but as development has continued, we've realized what was best for the game is to give it more time. Our team will continue to work on the project as well as our other games in development, including a brand new single player experience. We look forward to sharing more soon. We're grateful to our fantastic community for uh, your support. Thank you for your passion for our games. It continues to drive us. This is the sad come out of how there was nothing shown of this in the showcase. And everybody wants to know, especially because, you know, the Last of Us TV show was a big hit. Uh, people are riding high on The Last of Us. Where's The Last of Us multiplayer you promised us? Naughty Dog's just like, eh. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, weird. Because on one hand, PlayStation is trying really hard to stay with multiplayer. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, they know that The Last of Us is a single player. Uh, uh, largely a single player franchise. It's so weird because The Last of Us, like the draw of it was the single player. But it had this fully functional multiplayer suite in the original yeah. that was actually like very well received. Yeah, and people did play it for a long time. Yeah, yeah. But I don't. I, that's the thing is that you're taking the Last of Us and you're taking a gamble. You're yeah. you're, you're making a, a, a. I feel like people would be disappointed uh, to know that the Last of Us, especially off of the back of a very successful TV show, normal people being like, "Oh, I want to play The Last of Us." Oh, there's a new game coming out. Wait, it's only multiplayer. What is this? Yeah. So I understand, but also like, hey man, we want something new in The Last of Us uh, yeah. world, and this is this would have been a good opportunity. Undawn starring Will Smith. Who wants Will Smith? Uh, Will Smith is coming in the upcoming RPG Undawn. Uh, Never heard of this. It's before. it's it's a free to play iOS and Android game coming out on June fifteenth. Uh, players will join the Raven Squad, one of the many factions in the game's world uh, with their own rules of survival. A wide variety of weapons will be used to protect homes and allies, including tactical gear like drones, turrets, uh, decoy bombs, and more. The open world itself will be expansive and diverse. The press release promises plains, mines, uh, deserts, swamps, and abandoned cities, each with distinct ecosystems and dangers. Weather will also impact gameplay through rain, heat, snow, and storm. The game seems to be developed. The game has been developed by Lightspeed Studios. Um, and published by Tencent launched Level Infinite. So it's a Chinese uh, mobile game? Yes. Maybe they don't know. I mean, it's probably in development for a long time. Yes. Maybe they don't know that everybody hates Will Smith right now. This could be his comeback. <laughs> this could, this could, could be, be it. This Maybe he'll be, it. be yeah. only big in China. Now. Yeah. This could be, well, this could be the one that brings him back into the good grace of the U.S. Because, you, you know, apparently mobile games are hot right now. Yeah. Apparently... So. Hey, little known uh, Wolf Den trivia for you. Uh, when we used to do this show in our parents' basement, we had mm -hmm. a bunch of paraphernalia behind us. Yes. And in one of the uh, shelves was a shrine to Will Smith. Yes. It was uh, just a bunch of Will Smith action figures that yes. I've collected for some reason. <laughs> it was Jim West. Um, it started, the obsession started with Jim West. Right. Desperado. Yeah. Rough Rider. <laughs> no, you don't want not. None of this six, six gun, gun and this brother running, running this Buffalo soldier. Hey, look, it's like, like I told you. you. Now any damsel that's, that's in distress, distress be out of that dress when they meet Jim West. West. This is where I lose it. Yeah. No. No. I, okay. I lost it. It was a Jim West figure with um soft good clothes. It was a 12 inch Mattel dead shot figure from Suicide Squad. It was a a couple of pop vinyls. It was a Deadshot pop vinyl. I think it was. A, there might have been a Jim West pop vinyl. There might have been. I also think there was uh, an Independence Day one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that yeah. we were big Will Smith fans until the big slap of twenty twenty two. I, I mean, look, <laughs> if Bad Boys is on TV, I'm gonna watch it. True. You know, I think that's okay. Uh, last news: Lord of the Rings Gollum it has is cataclysmically bad. So we had just gotten done talking about uh, Tears of the Kingdom, how it may already be, you know, it's it's clearly the front runner for game of the year. And we now have a front runner <laughs> for worst game of the year. Yes. It is Lord of the Rings Gollum. Uh, following several delays, co-publishers Nacon and Dial 
Day of Dalek Entertainment released the game for PC, PlayStation, Xbox with the Switch version coming later this year. Um, Metacritic's best games of 2023. Rank- oh, okay, what are- let me just get it. It's got a 38 on Metacritic. It's, oh, no. It's very low. Uh, f- yeah, the PlayStation 5 version of the game is currently uh, ve- at the 296 out of 296 games reviewed for 2023. Uh, yeah. It's, and then the, the developer had to uh, uh, release an apology. Yeah, because it was it's so bad. And Apparently, so that's, that seems to be the thing though, because like respawn had to do it with uh, Jedi Survivor. Yeah. Naughty Dog did it with The Last of Us on PC. Um, but at least those are just the PC versions. This is all of them. This is this is just a bad game. It's, I, it's not like it's technically bad. It's just bad. Yeah, I remember when, like when they revealed the trailer for this, and it's like okay, a game where you just play as Gollum. That's weird, and it's like from a no-name developer i'm like this is weird what's going on and then it came out and it's like every like it like yes it looks like absolute shit but like the ui is like using default microsoft word font it's not even like any like attempt to make it look interesting yeah it looks like they it looks like they just fucked up i don't, I don't mm. like like i it's sad because like they like I like the idea of like doing something weird with the Lord of the Rings franchise. Yeah. Who wants to follow around Gollum, you know? Yeah. But make a unique and interesting game out of it, and it could be worth it. Yeah. And uh, they did not do that. They they did they did not do that. No, they did not. Uh, and this this is a perfect segue yeah. right right into this. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. So. I just pulled this right out of my ass. This is from Dolan Dark, uh, who was responding to the Lord of the Rings Gollum. Uh Uh-huh. I didn't put this in the key. Uh, And it's just thanks added to the collection. It's just a collection of all the apologies (laughs) for bad games. But also, this is also, I think, uh, uh, tied for Tweet of the Week. It's just a, a, a penis thing. Ah, yes. It's a penis thing in uh, Tears of the Kingdom by Honk Tactful. And this is the story of how I was ex- exiled from Tarrytown. <laughs> a lot of penis stuff in Tears of the Kingdom. Yes. But we're, we're big fans. Yes. Big fans of the penis stuff. Uh, is that Plank? Oh, my God. That's Plank from uh, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize that. All right. Uh, we have an unboxing, but I'm not going to do it. Oh. Do you want it? Do you... Are you actually upset? It's from D Brand. I know. I, was, I tried to read the packaging. It was All right, a lot fine. I'll do it. Okay. Uh, you, you do it. I'll read the Discord. All the right. people who left comments on last week's Wolfden Podcast over on each channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast, starting with Odyssey 225. Hey guys, just wondering if you guys heard about GameStop closing all of its stores in Ireland and if you guys have any opinions on why this, ha- this may have happened. Because they're poor. Yes, GameStop, despite the fact that they have all that meme stock money, uh, is a badly run business. Um, I'm shocked that they're closing all of their stores in Ireland. Uh, we're we're Americans, so we don't really care what happens outside of these 48 uh, contiguous United uh, States and also Alaska and Canada and sometimes Puerto Rico. Um, so we sometimes. were we were unaware of uh, GameStop's closing in Ireland. Uh, Yo, if it, D-Brand, why is this box got to be like this, man? <laughs> if it's anything like what's going on here where GameStop's closed because employees just fucking leave and don't want to work there anymore, maybe that has something to do with it. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, D-Brand's book, by the way, that I'm unboxing right now. Oh, they have a book? They have a book. Okay. Believe it or not, they have a book. That That's is... what all this writing is on here. Okay. Uh, I don't. I, they didn't tell me they were sending me this. They okay. told me they were sending me something else. But... Here it is. They're they're like manifesto. Oh jeez, very, very pretty. Yeah, it's a very pretty very nice coffee table. But this would be good pre preface preface. <laughs> Interesting. This will make for a good uh, coffee table. So it's just pictures of their uh, designs and like what they put on there, like what they make stickers Why for. Why is there a picture of Fidel Castro? I just opened to a picture of Fidel Castro. Uh, is this like a pretentious Apple thing? Maybe. Canada has given me two things, a sun and a grip case. Oh, it's fake. Yeah. <laughs> Fidel Castro didn't actually say that. It's a joke. Uh, ah, that's pretty funny. All right. That's pretty funny. It's a, it's a very beautiful book. Oh, yeah. 
Very cool. Uh, Queso1011. Haven't heard anyone talk about the possibility that the Joy-Cons and all the lawsuits may be the major reason why we don't have a Switch 2 yet. Nintendo will just prove the defect wrong with a new version. What do you guys think? That's a good point. They don't want to prove uh, their... Uh, they don't want to prove that they've done something wrong in court. Right. Like if they release a new version that has like Hall Effect sticks. Yeah. They're basically admitting something, but I mean, they could easily argue like we're always innovating. Yeah, I mean, because they they got sued because they allegedly ripped off Rumble before, and like mm-hmm. they fought through that, and they've included Rumble in all their systems. True. So I don't think this is gonna be like any different. I think if they're gonna release a new system, they're gonna release a new system with improved Joy Con. I mean, they have to improve the Joy Cons in some way because they don't want to. They don't want to have to keep repairing joysticks, you know? Right. Yeah. No, I I understand. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I have... These are skins. Uh, I don't know exactly. Oh, God. <laughs> Everything's falling apart. Oh, God. I hit a button. Oh, boy. Oh, no, did that stop the fucking... Oh, no, it didn't. Okay. I thought that stopped the recording. Uh, I got a bunch of skins here. Uh, I thought they were sending me ROG Ally skins. This Maybe is, those are it, and they're just really small. This is a tempered glass screen protector for the ROG Ally. There you go. That's cool. Uh, I'm not a bitch. I don't need screen <laughs> protectors. Uh, this I might is, need to get a screen protector for my uh, analog pocket, because I'm going to be okay. traveling with that. Okay, analog pocket, maybe, because yeah. that screen's... Uh, you want you want to be nice to that screen. Yeah. It's not a touch screen either. Like I feel weird yeah. about putting uh, screen protectors on a touch screen, because right. it usually messes it up. This is for the Steam Deck, but I'm more excited about this. Uh, this is the kill switch for the Steam Deck. Oh! This is the, uh, Steam Deck, uh, this is a cool box. Yeah. Pretty cool box. Uh, oh, wait, is this the... Oh! Yeah, it's the case, Oh, right? it's the whole case. Yeah. I thought it was the, the Switch-themed, uh... Decals. decals. Yeah. I wanted decals. Uh, this is cool, though. This yeah. is like, a kind of a Damascus decal that's yeah. pretty cool uh okay i'll put this on my steam deck right now i brought my steam deck just okay uh hey annie mock uh i would disagree that the recently re-released gba ports of the mario games are the definitive versions due to the gba versions of failures in screen crunch and music quality ps the will the GBA? yeah okay ps will i still often enjoy your old comic book videos oh thank you uh, don't think I don't miss those on some level. Oh, God. Uh, He's coming back. So I I get what they're saying because of the, uh, the GBA screen, like they had to reformat those games for the GBA screen. And there's a lot of like weird things they had to do to get it to work. Also, yeah, the audio, because it was coming out of a GBA uh, speaker and that thing does kind of suck. A lot of people actually recommend playing those games with headphones on because you get better sound quality. Oh, okay. So, uh, if, you you know maybe you're right just because they look prettier at first glance doesn't necessarily mean they're the best versions of those games this is weird the front the the front of this is weird i guess okay so this is the case yeah like you you got the grip and whatever and it's got a stand it's got a kickstand Ooh, that's a very beefy that's a good kickstand this is pretty cool uh oh and it rotates oh that's or does it come off it comes off okay (laughs) (laughs) uh that's cool um the shoulder buttons are a little. Sometimes I like to hit shoulder buttons from the from the sides. Yeah, and you can't do that because it's covered. Right. Uh, so that's a little weird. But this is the front. I that's definitely so that like you could throw it in your bag and not worry about like the screen getting scratched or yeah. like the joysticks getting messed up. That's, that's a big. All right, this is cool. This is yeah. cool. I like it. That's the thing now. Like I saw like Linus Tech Tips is selling them and like other people are doing it. Like they're just they're covers for the analog sticks so yeah. that they don't move. When you yeah, the, the tops are very, uh, very, very tall. Like yeah, how tall that is. That's pretty. I, I kind of like it though. That's pretty cool. But I mean, I have a case. Yeah. So I'm just gonna put it in the case. <laughs> it co- literally the Steam Deck comes with a case. Yeah. Which is one of the best. I think is one of the best. That's a great. Deck. Yeah. Yeah. The the freaking ROG Ally did not come with a case. Ooh. Luckily, uh, the Tom Talk Steam Deck case <laughs> fits the ROG okay. Ally. Okay. Um, so hey, uh, D brand, make a make a case, make a case for the yeah. RG ally. That that would uh, be more legit. Yeah, but this is pretty cool. 
Yeah. Uh, so thank you. I'm gonna put the the skin on it though. I, I wanted a skin for my Steam Deck, so yeah. I'm gonna do that. Uh, Reka from last week. No, the GameCube did not have a better library than the original Xbox. Try again, fellas. GameCube was a mediocre console, and the world agreed with that sentiment. Hence, it's utterly abysmal lifetime unit sales. Xbox was worse, wasn't it? No, Xbox had slightly better sales. Okay. Again, slightly better. But what did the original Xbox have? I just Halo? Googled best original Xbox games. Halo, Forza, Fable. Forza? Yeah, Forza 1 at the end. Okay. Um, KOTOR. Yeah, still... Uh, Help that's me out PC here. game. That was KOTOR. Uh, yeah, but a lot primarily of Primarily a PC Xbox, game. Yeah. Whereas GameCube had... Uh, what did it have? Melee. Melee. Uh, Wind Ma- Waker. Mario Sunshine. Prime, Wind Waker. Uh, Sunshine. Uh, Twilight Princess at the end. Billy Hatcher. It had a lot more games. Than- uh, 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 Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4. Xbox didn't have Resident Evil 4. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. There was a lot... Get, uh, I, I I had no interest in X, original Xbox at all. I had no interest in even going back and playing original Xbox games. Yeah, like except for Halo. I'm and trying to think that. back at like the original X, like that that era. That was, honestly, like, all the, the games that interested me at all were on other platforms. Yeah, like honestly, that was the best era of gaming right there. It was like, pretty good. generation. It was pretty. Good. And I'm trying to think like when the Xbox launched, the big games were. Uh, Dead or Alive 3, which sucks, <laughs> and uh, Halo. Like, that was it. All their other, like, first-party games were kind of crap. Like, Fusion Frenzy, mm-hmm. you know, the, all the rare games that came out, like, were not that good. Yeah. You know, whereas GameCube, yeah, it had, maybe it didn't have the biggest library, didn't have the greatest third-party support, but it had a much stronger quality library. The games that were there were good, you know? With Xbox, the only games that like really stood the test of time were either A, you know, PC ports, B, also on PlayStation 2, or C, Halo, Forza, and Fable. That was it. Uh, Caleb uh, Fox in the chat. Last one. Uh, Bob, I think I know what the deal is with your copy of Uncharted 4. If I remember correctly, you had only planned to buy the base version, but the cool art book sucked you into the upgrade a tier. Uh, then after you upgraded a tier, the GameStop employee got confident and tried to sell you a bunch of other stuff. I think I heard you talk about this on Wolf Den Live episode, but it's been a few months, so I'm not entirely sure. That sounds accurate. Yeah. The art, the art book would have swayed me. Yeah. yeah. That sounds like that's what happened. And thank you, Caleb Fox. Yeah. Leave it leave it to the to the diehards over here <laughs> to know, to, to have it That's down. right. Uh, all right, now we're in the chat real quick. Barak Bar- Barakers says, Hi, I'm on the front lines of war in the Ukraine. Oh, God. And this is the only stream we can connect because the connection is very bad. <laughs> From the bottom of my heart, thank you for these moments of peace and joy in this hell. Thank you very much. Oh, my oh God. God. Do you want us to uh, convey anything to civilization? Yes. <laughs> Do you need us to say anything? Uh <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing. You're doing. I'll get the president yeah. right away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thank you. Godspeed. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. We're, you, we're, 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 we're we are on your side for as you. much as we yes. can be by being civilians. Yeah. Um. Uh, more stupid video game shit. Uh, Razzle Jazzle. Crimson <laughs> Skies was a banger on Xbox, but yeah, GameCube was a better library. I do have Crimson Skies. And I am tempted to play because I've heard that is actually an excellent game. Uh, isn't that on Dreamcast? No. It was an Xbox exclusive. That's one of those games where, like, you can play System Link on it across all generations of Xbox. Oh, yeah, they did that. Yeah. Uh, MVG did that. Yeah. Uh, here is some clarification on the Dolphin stuff from a Dolphin developer. There was no DMCA sent. The Dolphin blog and the PC Gamer article was apparently mistaken. How could the Dolphin blog be mistaken? Yeah. Uh, you may have seen the news about Dolphin, Valve, Nintendo from a few hours ago. Um Unfortunately, pretty much everyone has been getting the legal details wrong. Quick thread about my personal s- disclaimer. I'm not officially involved with Dolphin anymore. Okay. Okay. So how am I supposed to believe you? Yeah. Uh, 
is to say that it was a DMCA takedown notice. Uh, there was none of these things. The DMCA is a broad set of laws that includes a process of cop for copyright owners to ask publishers to take down data. This is defined in section of the copyright law. Okay. In this case, none of this process was followed to the best of my understanding. This is what happened. Valve legal contact Nintendo of America to ask, Hey, what do you think about dolphin? Nintendo replied to valve. We think it's bad. And also that it violates the DMCA anti circumvention provisions. Uh, please take it down. Valve legal takes it down and forwards Nintendo of America's reply to Dolphin Foundation contact address. So why would they say it was a DMCA? I don't know. If it's not a DMCA, I would like to hear a statement from Valve. Yeah. Because we are, Nintendo's already like, yeah, we took that shit down. Yeah. I uh, want to know what Valve has to do with yeah. this. Because now it sounds like they, they, first of all, how did Valve allow it to go up in the first place? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Valve does allow a lot of shit to go up on Steam. Yeah. Yeah. They're notorious for like not really having a good uh, QC check up there. Flo in the chat says, Bob and Will, we need clarifications on barbecue versus grilling. Will, I said that I went to a barbecue at your house the other day yeah. on stream. And somebody in the chat said, um, was it a real barbecue or just grilling? I okay, so <laughs> I turned on my grill. Your what? My grill. Your hold on. Say the full name of what it is. My Weber Genesis 2 grill propane tank. It's a barbecue grill. Yeah, it's a barbecue grill. It's a barbecue grill is what I was trying to get at. And I I grilled hamburgers and hot dogs on it. Now, some people I guess some people will consider a barbecue different because they cook more things and it requires barbecue sauce on everything see that is not the pretentious argument okay what's the pretentious pretentious argument argument is that barbecuing Uh means that you are cooking at a low temperature for a very long time that's what okay the pretentious argument for barbecuing is okay and grilling is just slapping some burgers on a grill okay according to oxford dictionary (laughs) And Wikipedia, <laughs> barbecuing is a gathering of people throwing shit on a grill. That's what we did. And that's what we did. Yes. And fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the whole, it's like the people who are like, that's not a grilled cheese. You put tomatoes on it. Yeah. That. That's, we're having yeah. that sort of argument. Uh, I saw Mecha Dragon with 200 bits. With all due respect, Bob, I'm going to have to disagree with your notion that Pokemon trading cards or trading cards in general are gambling. What makes them not considered gambling is that, unlike casinos and loot boxes, you know what you're going to get out of the pack. In Yu-Gi-Oh! case, I think it's like a new con- uh, new common, one or two uncommon, and a rare. Plus, unlike gambling, uh, where you can leave a casino without a dime in your pocket, you at least get something with the cards. Sorry. That is a garbage <laughs> argument. Because you know the the um, the odds, right? Like you do at a casino, you know the odds. You don't know what cards you're getting. You know that you might get a rare card. You don't know which rare card, mm-hmm. and that's why it's gambling. The, the back of the day, the only rare, the only one anybody ever wanted from the original set of Pokemon cards was the Charizard. Right. That was the schoolyard one. Did you get the yeah. Charizard? Did you get the Charizard? Uh, there was a very low chance that you were going to get that Charizard. So me, being a little dumb kid, sitting there buying packs, hoping to get this Charizard. That is the definition of gambling because yeah. the Charizard was worth a lot of money. And when you sit down at a at a blackjack table, you can ask the dealer, how many decks are we playing with? Yeah. And, that, and then they tell you, and that's them telling you the odds. So it's the same fucking thing. Yeah. Underscore said, got Charizard in my first pack ever opened. You should call it there. Yeah. These never play again. Hey, Bob, what kind of streams you got planned? Uh, I did get the weed nunchuck from my parents. But I got things to do on Thursday, so I don't know uh, when the stream will actually be. But I, hopefully I'll be home in time to stream it. Uh, We got to go. 
Yeah. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. And thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Dead Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Dead. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Dead Podcast. You can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you get your audio podcast from but no matter where you get your podcast from please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms uh yeah like i said i don't know i'll hopefully be streaming on thursday i don't know what the hell i'm gonna be doing uh next week uh you might either get a really awesome episode of the wolf den podcast or you might get no episode at all <laughs> things are so up in the air it's wild you're gambling with podcasts yeah. this, this is gambling right yeah here. So uh, we'll see you. We might not see you. Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, I got a. I didn't post a video last week. I posted a couple of YouTube shorts. Will's in one. Hey. And uh, I'll have a video on Thursday, hopefully. I haven't even done the sponsor spot yet. I got to do that. Uh, I got a lot of things cooking up. Uh, thanks for being here. I'll see you guys hopefully Thursday. In the meantime, I'm going to raid somebody. And I'm deciding who I'm going to raid. And I'm scrolling around. And I think it's going to be wood. Yeah, it's going to be wood. Okay. He's playing uh guess. Just <laughs> just guess. Uh all right. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.